Hello everyone! <laughs> Welcome back once again to Castle Mac, where we definitely weren't just <laughs> losing our minds moments before the intro video ended. Thank you all for joining us. <laughs> you good? Can we go? <laughs> you need a second? Let's take a sip of my drink. Moment, Nate's here. <laughs> you gotta keep it professional. Everybody. Hey, let's have a real talk real quick. Tonight is the season premiere of season eight of Game of Thrones. Oh, what's that? What's that? I've never heard of it. We understand if at nine o'clock Eastern, you have to bail and go watch. So, I don't. let me say this before we get going. Before we get going, go fire up YouTube, type in Castle Mac, hit the subscribe button so that you can watch the rest of this episode between now and next Sunday. That would be ideal, I think, for everybody, right? So, if you could do that. But also, we would balance your dead to us. <laughs> We're gonna See be looking. the rest of us with the best of We're going to check. We're going to check the viewer list at 9 o'clock, and boy, howdy, if you're not there. Just kidding. We understand. Never All right. winning a prize ever again. You guys ready to play Dungeons & Dragons? <laughs> Let's play Dargons & Dungeons. You good? Okay. Everest laughs in her sleep. <laughs> there. <laughs> there, sleep. Yes. Imagine with me, if you will, a crisp, clear spring night. A light, clean breeze sets the treetops to hypnotic swaying, and the sound of wind in the branches mixes with insect songs to create a natural lullaby. Above, Selune casts soft, bright moonlight. With her tears, a constellation that seemingly travels with the moon, brightly visible, trailing behind her. Embers dance now among the starlight, and in our mind's eye we travel down, down towards the earth, where a warm fire crackles. What once was a wooden cooking spit made out of stout twigs now bends and breaks in the heat as our heroes recline on logs and large rocks around the fire. They've traveled fairly light and so no tents are put up, but thick blankets are unfurled and whatever few small comforts they possess are carefully placed around the makeshift campsite. To the south, a few copses of blue leaf and duskwood trees are visible in the moonlight the edges of the R-Deep Forest, which some have called the Realm of the Deepening Moon. We now join you all as you have just finished a light meal. It is the second night of travel. You are on the outskirts of the forest, heading south towards Nightstone. I think I sit with my long sheath sword just Resting up again, so it's this tall, you know, got the kind massive of long it. sword. <laughs> One more day, and we should reach the town that we were going to. Uh, you guys took an extra detour, it was five days. Or three five. more days. Three yeah. more days, excuse me. Three more days until we reached Nightstone. 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 Hey, it's Nightstone. I do hope. We avoid my partial kin. I did some thinking as we were walking. I'm not so sure I would be as welcome as one who is a whole kin to them. Probably not. Most elves are haughty. Have you found that in your travels, that elves are haughty where you come from? Everywhere I've ever gone. Why are you not? Why are you sitting right now? She's still thinking about. Just ignore. Everest has fallen asleep right now. You can come back when you're ready. Everest is like doing this. Lydia, there's a lot of disappointment in the chat that you're not wearing elephant ears right now. Didn't you get some? You need to go get them real quick and take a break. I think I just need to just go. For a yeah. Why don't you just go? Get compose your ears. yourself. Put your ears on. And come back. I can't compose myself and then put an elephant ears on. <laughs> Lydia, be, a, be an adult, compose yourself, put on your elephant ears, and come back to play pretend in your basement. <laughs> Y'all just don't talk to me for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Get this red gummy over Get that scarlet gelatin from out of her reach. Why? She wanted it. I do. Don't actually take it. Oh my gosh. 
This is a disaster. You can have it when you're ready. All right, so what we're doing here, if you guys would like, is to have a moment around the campfire. <laughs> or we can we can move along if you'd I'm rather. Good. I'm good with it. All right. <laughs> Elves are that way, especially in territory who love their own forest. Mm. Some. Generalizations is not usually something one should make. True enough. I have found the elves I lived amongst to be warm and accommodating, but then again, I was one among them. I have only found one elf to be, I wouldn't quite say warm, but accommodating. Hmm. But that goes for most people. These are troubled times. It was odd to see people take us in so kindly against those farmers. I wish I still had another glass of that delicious milk. And tasty milk it was. You've pretty much eaten through <laughs> the rations they provided you at this point, but you had some other trail rations as well, but you're a little light on supplies. Might have to tighten your belts a little bit over the next three days. You've traveled light. I don't imagine you guys are carrying huge adventuring packs. Have we seen any like game? Of there is certainly game around. Sword? Yep, it is. It is spring. You guys could certainly spend some time hunting. I think at this point you probably haven't, but you could choose to okay. tomorrow. Uh, I think you've got about a day left of, of solid rations. You could stretch it to two days probably, but you'd be you'd be uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel as it were. I'd rather hunt before we get into the forest proper. Not trying to offend anybody. If I can help it. It would be best. We can also lay some traps overnight. I do have some experience with that. My okay. tribe, we traveled and wandered far, set up traps, and hunted game together, but I was not as good as the rest at some things. Setting a trap is one thing I can do. I will do so before we go to bed. Arcathra is good at setting traps. Mind traps. Obviously. That's why we're here with a bounty on our head, too. I mean, not fully. It wasn't my fault. I beware. Either way, it was good fun. And it was getting rather boring sitting around that card table listening to dusty old dragonborn talk about his travels. I'm sure we won't see that captain again. <laughs> Dramatic irony. DM. <laughs> DM. They will. <laughs> what are the two of you doing as you sit around the fire having just eaten, reclining? Tell us, tell us what your character's nightly ritual is as you are preparing for sleep. Oh, it's intense. Yeah? Hit us with it. All right, so first... I take some um, witch hazel and remove my makeup from the day, mm -hmm. um, and then I put on this um, some like herbal salve, mm -hmm. kind of rub that all over my whole you get body. A on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bought it from a traveling Heidi Triton. salves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got some of those salves. Um, and then um, I take that off, and then I just fully oil <laughs> my skin. Um, and then I do my stretches. Um, I think I'm just very vain, and <laughs> all right, I love it. I like take great care and do like every like beauty ritual. Okay, thing great, I love it. The yeah. two of them are talking around the fire, and you're just like <laughs> beside them in the firelight, what listening from my oils. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the firelight just reflecting off your glistening skin. <clears throat> what is Everest doing here? Everest is. Uh, they're always just, you know. Focus, hyper focus. Oh my god. <laughs> just like just <laughs> always serious, always professional. <laughs> never never goofing. Okay, Everest is looking at a book right now. <laughs> uh, go get your ears. Uh, Are they upstairs? Uh I guessed a two lock. Go get them. Uh is the moon 
full what, what what kind of moon? It is in fact a here? full moon. And if you're unfamiliar with Saloon, it is essentially a full moon and there is like a trail of uh what people believe to be a constellation. It is in fact asteroids, uh or like debris from some crater impact on the moon. And it sort of trails almost like a comet. They're called Saloon's Tears. Um, but yeah, it is a full moon. It's bright out. It's it's really quite pleasant. I mean, again, it's it's early spring, so it is chilly. You're like wrapped in a blanket, but it's it's really very pleasant out. Always at dawn and at night, I meditate and do active meditation, which means meditation with my sword. But for a full moon, would you like to spar with me? <coughs> Sparring in the moonlight. I think I could. I could lift a sword. You showed to fight amicably. From where your power comes, I do not know. My power comes from my experience and my skill. From inside. Centering myself. Aligning all of the various spheres. For true balance. But what if you were gifted powers from the outside too? I to supplement your inner power. I've never known that to be the case for me. Why, where do your powers come from? I'll say this as we're. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think the two of them are treated to a view as you guys find a small little rise. They see the, the large moon silhouetting a small figure holding a sword that appears far too large for him. It is glowing, and I think glowing more in the moonlight. In the moonlight, yeah. You would even see the runes within it deep laid, a bright blue. Meanwhile, our erstwhile paladin is holding a shield that almost seems to convey a power of its own. Certainly looks like it has seen generations of use, and each has left its mark on the on the shield. So the two of you sort of line up with your silhouettes visible to the rest of the party. Why don't we do this? Let's just each roll three attack rolls. Uh, we'll do one, and then you can role play a little bit. We'll kind of d dictate what okay. happens at uh, the outcome of that. Okay. Oh, well, nice. You got me. Warming up. <laughs> well, technically neither of you would have beat each other's armor class, so you first you start warming up. And Tulak, you find that this little goblin is very much while he doesn't fight with sheer strength, he uses this longsword in a way you've never faced before. He uses your own momentum against you. He'll sort of hold it lightly, and the force you hit as it hits it swings it around back towards you. He fights extremely strangely for you. I think I think Tulak also fights very slowly. He doesn't move his feet very much. It's, it's more very stationary, kind of, um, whereas I, I believe Pharaoh would probably move a good deal quicker than, than Tulo. Um, so he's kind of easing into it. And you move quick, and your blade dances with the light of the moon. Indeed it does. This blade belongs to the Temple of the Elder Moon. Passed down. You do not mean the goddess Sehanin Moonbow, do you? One to pointed they prayed to Sehanin Moonbow, but not I. My master at one time did, but left that monastery. Maybe one day you could resume again, but that is who has given me my powers. I prefer to perfect myself, but I appreciate it. You are like a mountain, or like an oak. Hard to hit, but I will try anyway. And his shield use is quite proficient. Every counter blow you have, his shield is there to catch the blade. Yeah, that's a okay. hefty hit. <laughs> that's a good hit. Finally, Pharaoh puts all of his speed to use and just barely gets under your shield and obviously doesn't harm yeah. you. Hits oh. you with the flat of the yeah. blade kind of on, on your thigh. And, and while you are a bit taken aback, you can tell that he is just an extremely skilled fighter. And he's fighting really in a, in a style that you're just not familiar with. I mean, long swords are not used no. this way. But you're quickly learning. You're a quick study and you're seeing the way he fights. You move much quicker than one would guess with a sword that large relative to you, my friend. He is to not think of it as a sword. It is a piece of you. It is just an elongated form of my arm. Like every other piece of me is a tool. Your shield is interesting. My shield... My shield is the source of my strength. It does not leave my side. It stands between me and harm that could come to me so that I may continue my journey. Everest, Akathra, are you guys watching this sparring occurring? You're hearing the kind of poo, poo, 
of the blades striking each other. You can see the, the trailing blue light of his blade. <clears throat> Clearly a magical sword that seems more magical in the moonlight. The two of you exchange any words as you sit and watch? Um, probably not. Uh, she's, you know, busy oiling and mm, yeah. <laughs> well, stretching. Oiling's important business. <laughs> Talking and to nobody. This is the key to getting... <laughs> <laughs> Then a third and final attack roll, gentlemen. Oh, good. Oof. <laughs> All right. The end of the fight. Just a, a few more minutes of sparring. You do land a handful of blows on him, but he he's able to kind of get around your shield pretty deftly. Um, again, by the end, you're like, yeah, I'm definitely learning how this fighting style works. Actually, what what did you roll an eleven? Does that actually break his armor class? Uh, I got a. I'm an eight. I, that would have been an eighteen. Did they so get you? Matched it, yeah. Okay, yeah. So so he would he would have got you. So he he kind of won the match. Yeah. But again, by the end, you're sort of uh, a little bit out of breath, but also knowing that in that brief amount of time, you've sort of like, wow, that's like a whole new style of sword fighting. But I feel like you may be able to counter that in the future. Uh, I would. I would be like, ah, you fight very well, defensive, but you favor your left side with your shield. I. Well, it is not a style I have seen, but I appreciate it. I have much to learn of that style of fighting. You say you draw your, your strength from inside you. Maybe, maybe I favor too much the strength from outside me. My master would say, whatever works for you. Everest, as you are sitting with your book, you hear a strange sound. You sort of look up at them as they're sparring. <coughs> they seem to be wrapping up. You go back to your book. You hear a rustle in the leaves, like, right next to you. And you look over, and staring at you is the face of a massive white wolf. And it's just... Sort of growling at you. It's so quiet, nobody else has yet even heard it. I would <coughs> start to cast command. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you start to cast a spell, and as you're casting it, a humanoid figure sort of emerges from behind her, uh, the wolf, all in all in leathers and greenery, and he's like, it's okay, girl. And he kind of scratches her, and she's... And kind of sits down and sits back, and he says, I'm sorry if I startled you. And at this, you all hear this voice now, and look over, and seemingly out of the shadows, a man standing, bow at his back, covered all in leathers, seems to be elf or maybe half-elf, and a massive white wolf, whose head, when sitting, comes to about his chest level, and he's kind of scratching behind her ears. I noticed your fire in the distance. May I warm myself by it, join you for the night? I said we're walking over, yeah. so... Yeah, you guys are walking over. <clears throat> May I ask who you are? Delon is my name. This is Luska. Yes. <laughs> um... Of course, join us. Wonderful. Come on, girl. He kind of looks around. You all seem to travel light. You all start coming down. He sort of looks at you and does cock his head a little bit as you're sort of sheathing the blade and he sees the, the blue runes upon, upon the surface of it. Very problem. Not from me. I'm Delon Winterhound. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. This is Luska. And she's sort of like... Uh, oh, maybe Gulp of it. Is, uh, is that a winter wolf? She is indeed, but don't worry, she won't harm a head, a hair on your body. Good, good, good to know. Hello, Laska. Her mouth is definitely <laughs> here to you, looking up at her. Nice, nice to meet you, Delan. Nice to meet you as well. What are you, uh, if I may ask? Uh, I've never seen a creature such as you. Uh, well, I'm Everest. Everest, it's a pleasure to meet you. And as he says that, he unstrings his bow and sets it down and takes up spot around one of the logs and pulls off a large leather pouch. And he pulls out two conies that he's recently... Rabbits, small uh. rabbits. He pulls them out and he starts skinning them. And you said you're from Cholt. Um, <clears throat> I did. Hmm. Well, how are you finding the Sword Coast so far? Well, I've seen nothing but the forest, and it's been a bit dangerous. As forests here are, 
I imagine that's no different than Cholt, stray far from civilization. Different dangers. Of course. What was your name again, friend? It was Pharaoh. Are you just uh, two lone travelers? Most of the time, yes. We're heading north. Some business to tend to. And what of you, friend? You look like you're from the north as well. I that is where my tribe tends to wander, farther ah. north. You may call me Tulo. My name is Tulak. Those who I consider friends call me Tulo. Well, then as friends, I hope you'd be willing to share these conies. And as he's cutting them very skillfully with his sharp blade. Picturing, like, two, like, Coney Island hot dogs. That's exactly what I'm picturing. <laughs> That's what he has, is two big old floppy hot when dogs. That, when you said that at first, I was like... Pulls out hot dogs. He's just skinning a hot dog. It's <laughs> like onions. Uh. <laughs> can we turn this off? Yeah. Or can I have a blanket alternately? I'm just going to turn this off. You can wear Steven's, like, big winter coat. Oh my god, no. I don't no. think we are really ones to refuse food. I would definitely share one of those tasty, tasty cookies. It would be our pleasure, wouldn't it, Luska? And she kind of like... <laughs> kind of... Seems like no is the answer, but he kind of just scratches behind her ears. And what about you? What's your name, if I may ask? Hakathra. Hakathra. Pleasure. Delon. Where are you all traveling, if I may ask? Heading south. Nightstone. Ah. I was in Nightstone three days ago. Uh, anything you can tell us about it? They said they put out a call for uh, adventure work. Yeah, so they've got an orc tribe to the west of them. Uh, tenuous relationship, I think, at best. Certainly, uh, well, relations can always be improved. There's a group of elves who live in this very forest. They don't take kindly to strangers, although I haven't known them to be outwardly violent. They do have a bit of a border conflict with Nightstone. Seems that Nightstone, as they continue to grow, encroaching ever closer on the forest. And elves, as you know, don't take kindly to deforestation. Lots of ruins. But we shouldn't make generalizations. Of course not. (laughs) Kind of smiles and gets the conies ready to put over the fire. Are you going to turn us in? Turn you in. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of rubs the back of his neck and, and I mean, even takes a step back and even Luska seems to kind of like perk up a little bit and he's like, are you criminals? No, but we are in trouble and there's no point in beating around the bush or lying. Captain of a gambling book with a bounty in my head. If you see his posture completely relax, he's like, oh, I care not for such things. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of bounties on my head. Oh, really? That's what happens when you ruffle feathers. And me and Luska are good at ruffling feathers, isn't that right, girl? And he scratches under her chin. Yeah, again. I don't doubt it. (laughs) (laughs) And when he does that, she seems at ease, and she now kind of puts her paws down in the dirt and lays down by the fire. You, uh, ranger? Um, do you know of the Emerald Enclave? Uh, druids and rangers, right? Right. Yes, I'm a ranger. Nice. I know these lands yeah. very well. Hmm. Uh, is there a, maybe a, what's the path of least resistance to get to Nightstone? Uh, well, unfortunately, it will be through the forest unless you can somehow get across that river. There's not another crossing, at least for several days south. The river's wide and deep, and the forest pushes all the way against its borders. You could go around, but you come out near the hills, and, well, there are things worse than elves who might be a bit encroached upon in those hills, I can assure you. (sighs) Okay, fair enough. I'd rather risk elves than beasts. Elves can be at least reasoned with. True enough. So, heading up north for business that is your own. Um, I think the least I say about it, the better. But 
Always dire times. That's what they say. Lots of problems up north. What timeline is this? Like... 1493. In the spring, 1493, Waterdeep, Waterdeep wrapped up six months ago. So, so then the three years after the are... Well of Dragons. Okay. Yeah, three full years after Well of Dragons. And you said Waterdeep was six months ago? Yeah, it ended six months ago. Huh, okay. Ish. Maybe more like five. It ended like, you know, end of the year, yeah. 1492. Five or six months is the end of so in terms of the broader things happening in the world, there is still stuff happening up north, but it hasn't spilled over into open warfare or anything. Well, besides the business that you shouldn't share, got any good stories. <laughs> <sighs> what do you think, Lesko? What ones can we tell? He thinks for a second and he says, All right, let's trade stories. Hydra, Muska and I. Exploring an old dwarven cavern. Far to the south now. Mostly flooded out. Had to do a bit of swimming. Good thing I had a potion of water breathing. Well, I learned something that day. As skilled as I am facing monsters and hunting, I found that hydras, or at least this particular hydra, could breathe underwater. You can imagine my surprise when suddenly out of the murk came seven heads snapping at me. Well, as you know, hydras are susceptible to fire. Fairly difficult to make fire when you're 30 feet underwater and there's not but a cavern above you. So I did the only sensible thing. Climbed on its back, did my best to avoid any bites, wound up biting itself quite a bit. That damage caused more heads to grow. Had 10, 15 heads by the end of the fight. I found a small tunnel, swam through it, and it couldn't fit all those heads through. Probably still down there to this day. Bold. It shows a great amount of guile. I like it. Can hydras breathe underwater? Maybe. Would Everest know? Probably not, but if you want, you can roll a... What is there? I forget. There's so no a, knowledge. There's a nature. Yeah, roll nature. I think that makes sense. Okay. I will. Cool. Changed its nature. I rolled an 18. And yeah. I have a plus four. I think, <laughs> I think you're looking back like you close your book and you think it's total bullshit, but but maybe you have the wisdom to see that it's a good story and at least Pharaoh is engaged. I'm not gonna call yeah, him out. But but you're also know. like I'm pretty sure that's bullshit. I mean, I first would never call somebody out. But hey, I'll say this: you don't, you can't read him to see if he is lying or telling a fabrication. But based on your knowledge, hydras have never been known to breathe underwater. Terrifying sight, indeed. So, is it just the bounty that brought you all together? This is a motley crew. I encounter many motley crews, and I love it. Well, mostly, yes, actually. I thought I would be able to win a hand of Three Dragon Ante. Did not. Skilled card player, are you? <laughs> Apparently not. Mm. Definitely not. Maybe one of the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> Me either. I care not for games of chance. Well, I offered my sword arm of service. So you're a cell sword with these well, bunch of brigands. Now I am. <clears throat> Congratulations. What's your story? Why are you so shiny? <laughs> Smell nice, though. Better than these conies. <clears throat> I don't have a story. Everyone has a story. You've got a wicked looking dagger by your side. It's a family heirloom. It is a wicked looking dagger. It's true. I also noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I have no story. I grew up and spent all of my life in Waterdeep, um, mostly working the last couple years side by side with that one. Mm -hmm. um, and how did the two of you come to fight side by side? Out of necessity. Found ourselves in the right place at the right time. Uh, we found ourselves uh, short on friends at a time where we needed somebody else. I've always been short on friends, but... I've always found I had no need or use for friendship. However, necessity brought safety and a friendship, I suppose. I like could call blade, it that. Forged in fire. 
Yes. You've been together for some time, then. Some time. How long? Probably going on two years. Seen some scrapes, then. Oh, yeah. Lots of them. Hmm. And you're from Chult. How long have you been with these ne'er-do-wells? Two days now. <laughs> two days. Two days for you. Nope. I feel like I'm at the... Witnessing the beginning of something wonderful. How long have you been with your wolf? Oh, many years now. Fifteen years, found her as a pup. Far to the north, rescued her from... No. Do you know what a Ramorez is? You probably know what a Ramorez is. I, I do. It was a small one. Big enough. That... Oh, you told me about those big... Like insects, but... That's a good impression. <laughs> Waska's like, <laughs> puts a paw over her eye. <laughs> He's been working on it for the past two days. Ah. Well, that's good road fodder. <laughs> Better than well, fodder. these conies are just about ready. Shall we Shall we dine and then have some rest? Aye. It would be good. Yes. I like it. He divvies up the meat. It's pretty delicious. I first use this. <laughs> They're drunk. <laughs> 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 I'll like <laughs> scoop up a little and before I put it to my mouth Dida's little snake head will come out and take a little and then I'll have some tight uh, I'm gonna roll to see if he noticed <laughs> <thing>. Does Dida <laughs> just like oh in fact like I mean the snake does the thing where it's like <laughs> real quick and he Delon kind of looks and is like makes uh, like eye contact with you for a second and just kind of smiles to himself to see <laughs> How's he eat? I was just about to say, he pulls out his pipe. <laughs> no. packs, packs the pipe. Oh, I'll have just, the pipe as well. I just got my <laughs> shot. Right, so I just I just like, pulls out a little pipe. And it's like, <laughs> a little snake pipe. He pulls I his light out. just got my shit together, and you guys are doing this to me. <laughs> All right. With okay. that, he pulls a thick blanket over himself, and Luska kind of lays down, and he sort of lays on her body, so her, her legs are beside him. And he kind of pulls his hood down over his eyes and looks like he's making for sleep. Does anyone else do anything? I can take first watch. I like the moonlight. He says, no need. Get some sleep. Fair enough. I'll lay down, looking at the moon, be like, Hydra's breathing underwater, huh? <laughs> Something <laughs> every day. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 if Everest hears that, they would laugh a little bit. Like, okay, okay. So, <laughs> ground shakes a little bit with <laughs> Everest's laughter. <coughs> the next morning comes. You all awaken to another beautiful spring day. Put some pollen covering all your belongings. Oh, Flowers right. blooming everywhere. Delon and Luska are totally gone. Although you do find a cloth open with some additional provisions and some nuts and berries kind of stacked up. At least a couple handfuls of food for you. What a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is an act of kindness. To just leave random nuts and berries that could potentially be poisonous to strangers. What would you have to gain? If he was going to do us, he could have killed us in the night and taken our belongings. Looks around and makes sure his belongings are all there. <laughs> belongings seem totally untouched. They're not poisonous. <laughs> Everest has seen, like, their fair share of nuts and berries before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you sort of inspect them, I think, with a... I mean, I think, I get the sense that maybe Everest is just curious about stuff and is sort of, like, just checking it out and, like, you're good. All right. I just think that they have enough knowledge to be like, that's a run-of-the-mill raspberry, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you wanted to poison this berry. <laughs> I got these. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> I think I'm, in fact, good. However. Not all of them are lethal. Some of them just make you shit your pants. <laughs> And I imagine you say this as you're folding up your blankets and getting all of your belongings together. And if you're prepared, we can head south into the Ardeep Forest. I'm prepared. 
Uh, before we head into the forest, I'm going to check the coverings of my furs and my cloth around <coughs> my sword. Seems fairly well wrapped. Yeah, you tie it off. Rewrap them, and I'll pull out my short bow instead as I go in. So okay. Sword cool. will be up in short. You can hold the, hold the sword kind of over your shoulder, uh, bow bow over your, uh, over your left shoulder. Anyone else want to do anything before you head into the forest? Now, this particular forest is comprised of two types of trees. You have uh, blue leaf, which are slender trees with, with, well, I'll just show you a picture of it, all right? That is a blue leaf tree. Gotcha. All right. That is a duskwood tree. And the further you get into the forest, the blue leaves give way to these towering duskwoods, which actually give uh, pretty limited visibility in the forest just because they kind of grow everywhere, the way you might imagine aspen. Right? So it's sort of like you look in a direction and there's just all these trunks filling, filling your view, so you can't really ever get far line of sight. There is a bit of a path that you find, looks like maybe a game trail that you try to follow, but you kind of quickly find yourself like, oh man, we're in this forest with a very high canopy, difficult to see the sky and navigate. Who has the best survival score? I will say that this is like where Everest is used to traveling through. Like, uh, uh, yeah, that's true. To the high canopy. I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I got a plus two. What are we looking for? Survival. Survival. I've got a plus four. Okay. Mm, but I've got a plus zero. Okay. <laughs> well, hold up. I've got a, I've got a plus I'm three. I'm gonna stop you right there. <laughs> I think I think Everest. Then how do you explain to the group that you feel like you can lead them? <laughs> you done? Oh, thirsty. Um, so once we get into the forest and it starts becoming to look like a, like a rainforest canopy and everyone looks confused, I would, like, would you guys, like, be confused? Would you let on to it? I I don't know that I'd be confused necessarily, but I do think it'd be, like, map out and doing the, like, like, trying to navigate, but I definitely don't have it. (laughs) Uh, my fucking nose. <laughs> you got there, buddy? <laughs> I'll just let I'll say it. I'm lost. <laughs> and it, it is difficult to tell where north and south are just because of the canopy. So if you would like to roll. The survival? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I can't RP why. I would know why. Okay. <laughs> like my That's direction. Fine. I don't know how to. So I rolled it. So 14. 14. You're, you're reasonably confident that you sort of are like figuring it out. You can tell by the angles of some of the light shafts coming through that you're sort of like, yeah, it's this way. The game trail has in fact disappeared, but you find a little creek that seems to be running, and you believe that following the creek for some ways would take you there. The creek. Gotta follow the creek. Gotta follow the creek. Um, okay, yeah. Okay. I was trying to think of something really profound, and I just can't right now because I'm still... Okay. <laughs> uh, that sounds good. If this were a city or a sewer, I'd know how to do it. Uh, one suggestion, though, while well, you lead us, Everest, you should probably have Tulak in the forefront. He looks the most ambish. It's a good idea. <clears throat> Being a bastardized elf might not be the best, but... I guarantee you it's better than being a goblin. I, was, I did not want to say it, but... I will walk front, but there is a reason I was a trapper and not a tracker. I will need some sort of direction. I will walk with you. I... I'm going to walk very close to behind you. <laughs> Or I could ride on your back like a backpack. <laughs> Watch out, though. He does like to hold hands. What time of day is it? Well, it's still early. You guys have kind of just entered the forest. It's like 9 a.m. Like so, Okay, so... I'm just going to blow my nose real high. <laughs> no, just leave just it blow, in there. Blow right here. Pick <laughs> me up. Don't do it in here. Just grab the, the backdrop. Why would you... <laughs> <laughs> he did it in here. Yeah, I did. It's all right. It's all right. Some, some background ambiance. I did say there's pollen all over the place. You and can, acorns the, falling. We hear the acorns snuffling falling. of some random creature in the undergrowth. Just get two more handfuls. Okay. You know you're gonna... I can't stop. I should never have bought three pounds of it. 
<laughs> okay, so you all travel uh, with some degree of accuracy. You follow this creek, and for the two of you who are in front, please roll me perception checks. Good. Gladly. That's an. That's an 18 plus a 6. Okay. Holy you. Smokes. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> you feel a big elephant hand kind of like grab you and stop, and the rest of you sort of just run in. And Everest, you see it far before anyone else. In fact, you might have to describe that you, what you see. Way up ahead, drinking out of the creek, you see a white doe. Like a beautiful, bright white doe that almost seems to be glowing. Like almost seems to be giving off some luminescence. And it looks up and sort of looks at you. And as it does, you can see that there seems to be flowers sort of attached like... Almost like it's wearing like a crown of flowers. Just these beautiful blooming flowers and it kind of stares at you somewhat majestically. Have they seen it? Have you guys seen it yet? No, they have not seen it. You've seen it just now. Okay, so I would stop everyone and I would like turn around to to put my finger up and I would not say anything because I don't want to spook it and just point. As you all follow their finger, you in fact see this doe sort of looking at at you all, and you see a shadow pass behind it, and an even larger buck, also stark white, with antlers, and there seems to be flowers just attached to the antlers, sort of comes up behind the doe, and they're both just looking at you. Um, Everest would, like you would for, like, an animal to show that you're friendly, put your hand out, and it would try to, like, very slowly and carefully and nicely, like, try to like walk towards it and like make cool. eye contact and roll me animal do camp. everything. Yeah, totally got it. You even grab some of the some of the food that Delon left for you. Roll me animal kin. Animal handling. Yeah, animal handling. Sixteen plus four. Whew, man, you're hot. Hot on the dice. On those new dice too. Those those hot pink. I actually described those as electric pink, and the person behind the counter laughed at me. Why? I don't know. <laughs> because I found that to be a highly accurate description. Yeah. So I'll take those electric yeah, pink I'd ones. Yeah, I'd say that's hot pink, yeah. and then that's electric. I literally was like, hey, can I get those electric pink ones? And they're like, <laughs> and I was like, uh. Excuse me? I'll, I was like, listen to me. <laughs> I'll describe dice however I feel like. Anyways, so you. <laughs> you're like, fireball, fireball. Yeah. Magic missile. <laughs> no, 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 don't lose it. Don't lose it. We're doing so good here. We've got some character interaction. You approach this dough. And what do the rest of you do? Are you holding back? I think... I'm Mark watching. ...would actually start to cast Speak with Animals. Okay, awesome. <laughs> you you can do so. Uh, but with that, with that high of a roll, you step forward, and the deer sort of like... It does the thing where like it looks like it's going to jump, and its tail is sort of flashed up, but the doe kind of takes a, a like tentative step forward and kind of gets down... Where it can sort of, uh, well, I guess you're much taller than it. It's I, sort I, of, I, I kneel down. Yeah, you're kneeling down, and it sort of is making eye contact with you, very wary. And then it comes in and is like, takes a bite out of your hand and kind of backs off. And as that happens, you complete the uh, the spell yeah. and, and cast uh, um, Speak with Animals. Did the buck bolt? Nope, the buck there? is just chilling. The buck is watching, like, pretty yeah. wary. I think he would, if the buck looked more... Tense than the the doe. Seeing as the doe did approach Everest, I think he would speak more towards the buck. Okay. Um, and he just kind of motioned towards him, peace, friend. We mean no harm. It sort of like stamps its feet and is like, "What are you doing in the sacred forest?" I need a better buck voice. What are you doing in the sacred forest? We we mean. He takes a kind of tentative step forward. We mean just to pass through, mere travelers unknown to this land. Your weapons pierce our kind. Do you intend to harm us? Not at all. Not at all. Not in the least bit. The warming season is when the people come. Hunters. Trackers. Hmm. We mean we mean no harm to you. We mean only to pass through, preferably, with as little activity as possible. He kind of stamps his feet again, and the doe, her ears are now kind of perked and pointing towards you, and he's just like, then pass in peace, and he bolts. And she sort of looks and, like, looks at you one last time, and she turns and bolts as well. I would have been smiling at her. Majestic animals, for sure. They are terrified of us because it is, in fact, a hunting season, I guess, amongst the humans. 
I would advise caution when setting traps and eating. They did seem to think this was a sacred forest, at least to them. With the food that DeLong gave us, we shouldn't need to hunt in here. Plus, I can go for a day. I, I think they seemed willing to let us go through unaccosted, at least from a deer's standpoint, but I've never seen a deer looking such as that, so it must carry some weight. You've definitely never seen a deer like that. I mean, they were majestic and almost ethereal. Are there frequently glowing animals not in, in the forest? <clears throat> not in Chult. Not up north. Have you ever seen a glowing animal? No. Legends tell of a golden elk, but... I've read of that one. Legends, not... I've never seen one myself. Oh, I have. Really? The hero Ennis rides it through the city of Waterdeep pretty regularly. Everybody knows about it, actually. I've seen it. Can it's win. impressive. <laughs> oh, well... They're in parades and sometimes outside <laughs> Stories of the Stories have North. made it all the way to Chult. So you have seen a glowing animal. <laughs> it's not glowing, it's just like gold. Like, like it'll reflect like light, you know, like the luster of metal, but no, I mean, I wouldn't quite say it glows. Not that's like not that. what the legends say. Thanks, Kai. The legends say the, the giant golden elk appears, the changing of the times, and the new king of the lands. Oh, as my master would say, that's the problem with legends. What's up, Beep again? I, I have no that? idea what that was. Something. Maybe it's a printer. <laughs> it might off. be, yeah. Is Maisie okay? She seems okay. She's literally out. <laughs> all right, you all continue traveling south for some time, having more conversations about animals, and you start to see now some ruins, just some overgrown elvish ruins. It's pretty difficult to even kind of see what they once were. They're just so overgrown. But they do seem like they were maybe at one time impressive. Um, and finally, the rest of the day passes uneventfully. You stop a couple times for meals. You are getting pretty exhausted, and there's a mental exhaustion that happens in the forest because you can never see the horizon, and you feel a little bit constrained, and even your voices and sounds just bouncing off the trunks just has a slightly disorienting effect that over the course of a little bit of time it's not a big problem. By the end of the day you find that you're just like mentally foggy <laughs> and, and kind of exhausted about it. Including Everest. Including Everest, but you also are sort of expecting. In fact, maybe you even ex describe it. And as the sun begins to set, you find the remains of a once glorious structure. A temple, perhaps, could have been a dwelling. Shattered columns crumbled all over the place, their capitals boasting finely crafted carvings depicting leaves and other sort of natural environments. Glints of mithril still peek through some of the deeper veins, though most appear to be picked clean. In your minds, you can almost hear a distant elvish lament as you set up your camp within the hollow inside the ruins. They're surrounded by lush holly bushes and you're struck by the dichotomy. Here, the remains of a civilization at the end of a long defeat, and yet life springs eternal. You set up your camp, start to bed down for the night. As the sun sinks over the horizon, which you can't see, and the twilight turns to darkness, you hear a faint singing coming from the woods. Sounds like a single voice, strange, ghostly lament. Just a very sad sounding. And you see a faint blue glow in the trees. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back in ten minutes. Hope to see you all then. I don't. I don't trust it. Uh, yeah. Better Was that it? it <laughs> to be determined later. Nope, that's the name. Just going Mac Lord 1997. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why I picked that. Uh, okay, so uh, we have discussed Tiamat, the, mm -hmm. the whole Tyranny of Dragons campaign. We're now going to talk about uh, where we started streaming, which is the Curse of Strahd campaign. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't have a lot of wide-reaching impacts on the uh, sort of main timeline, main lore of the Mac-Gotten realms, largely because it took place over two weeks, and it takes place in and a, a demi-plane. Demi right. Uh, 
it some um, some things are important that that got out of it though, yeah. uh, and there are a couple. It's affected not only characters that have entered the realms, but some characters that are pre-existing, specifically mm-hmm. Nimbus. Right. Uh, but why don't you talk about the sure. setting for Barovia and, and the setup that we had? Yeah, yeah. So we started uh, in the town of Goldenleaf, which was Nithbis' sort of adventuring-centric town. We started with a group of characters and followed them for a couple of little adventures. Side note, in the uh, world of Mac lore, they discovered uh, a gentleman by the name of Asir Zazawala, which was Salos' brother who was also dead and his soul was in hell. And that's what triggered the events that allowed our what we call the OG characters, really the Rise of Tiamat characters, to enter hell and, and save. I love talking about this like this, like so seriously. Oh, like, no, I'm, I'm the... We entered hell, um, and there was a dragon, f- five heads. Uh, so anyway, so um, so they discovered him. So that was kind of a, a main, in, if you will, in the overarching you know story of ours that allowed good, them to go rescue. Good tie-in where right. we we found a seer and then right. delivered a seer to the original heroes. Right. Uh, but then they got swept away by the mists and found themselves in Barovia. And you can largely watch everything that transpired in Barovia uh, starting about midway through the campaign. Maybe more like a third in yeah, the just campaign. Because uh... that's when we started streaming, kind of just right in the middle of the campaign. So you can actually catch up on all of that. And I think it's okay to just spell out some of the things that happened at the end there that will have broader impacts later. So one of the things we did lore-wise, uh, well, you know, why don't you talk about some of the lore? Because I think that's I think that's up your alley. Okay. Uh, so uh, you want the I want, specifically? I don't want all positions. I want all positions. All, all the lore. Yeah. Uh, so uh, going in, we had. I, I think it's important to talk about the characters going in because <laughs> they were deeply affected by right. the Matt Gotten realms. Uh, Driessa, uh, who was Raven's character who did not make it out, was kidnapped by the Red Wizards of Thay as a child mm-hmm. and experimented on, which will play very much into Strahd in a moment. Uh, we had uh, Ava, who was a Kenku, who also did not make it. Mm-mm. Bryce, who was a monster hunter, who also did not make it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry. And then we also had my character, Kaecilius, that I brought in, uh, was, I wanted to set up post-war of the dragons. He was a red dragonborn, mm-hmm. but his family had made oaths to Behemoth to be right. a good paladin, but he was imprisoned. Yeah, so I loved Kaecilius. He was a, a, a complicated character because he wanted nothing more than to fight for Behemoth and fight for good, but instead, classic prejudices had him locked up during the War of Dragons because people were basically like, yeah, you're a red dragon and we're fighting, so nah, man, no. So he was denied sort of what he saw as his destiny. So a very conflicted, you know, very, very, uh, a character who really felt like he had failed sort of on his initial vision for his own life. Mm -hmm. So just a very conflicted character who teetered between good and evil kind of all through the campaign. Ultimately, that was played upon by... Strahd himself, mm-hmm. of course, seen some things similar in Caecilius right. as Strahd would have seen in himself. Right. Uh, throughout this campaign, though, we lost many characters. We gained Wayland, who you will find, who is Coach's character. Right. Uh, a young lord who actually, to give you an honest tie-in, came from a realm that Mm-hmm. Steven and I played in with our buddy Jeff that right. was never streamed. It was completely his homebrew. So right. it's yep. a bit of a tie-in to a, another thing for us. But So right. he came from one realm to Barovia, and he ended up making it through and is now in the Mechgotten Realms right. with a castle. Yep, and in fact, we're getting ready to start the Mac Marches. This will be sort of his story of establishing a colony pretty far north to act as a buffer between kind of civilization and the uniting tribes of the north. Mm-hmm. Which, why don't we talk a little bit about what happened with Caecilius? I think it's okay to spell some of that out, although you can keep anything mum if you'd prefer. I think it's okay. So, Caecilius, ultimately, uh, there's a point in Barovia of the Amber Temple Mm -hmm. where some can seek dark gifts that will give you power, and at the same time, they cost something. It's a bit of a curse or something. Uh, Caecilius accepted those gifts Mm -hmm. in order to defeat Strahd, and in his mind, the distrust from his comrades finally threw him over the edge probably with Mm -hmm. a little bit of the push from the 
the shadow gifts that he accepted, right. where he is, he turned against the party and decided to take the power for himself. Yep. Uh, ultimately, he stole the one weapon that could defeat Strahd, and mm-hmm. they had to face down their former comrade, in which he killed Wayland. Did kill Wayland and Wayland's beloved childhood horse. Yep. That was that one got me a little yeah. bit. Osprey, R.I.P. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, the party was able to defeat him. Uh, Driessa specifically, who they were the oldest mm-hmm. friends at that point. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they did defeat him uh, and thought that was resolved. But of course, as we got to the end of Strahd, which I hope you've seen by now, I certainly won't spoil anything or take away from anybody's glory, because there was a glorious final role of the campaign there. Um, there was a kind of stinger, right? A sort of after credit scene that showed... the. Mac Cinematic yeah, Universe. Yeah, that's the Mac Cinematic Universe, <laughs> where uh, there was some amber sitting in the snow, presumably in the in the spine of the world of the Forgotten Realms, the Mac Gotten Realms, and uh, a clear indication that Caecilius was there. Accepting some undead powers to continue living, which yep. I'm sure you could figure out. Steve did a wonderful thing in Strahd, though, that had to play into mm-hmm. Asimars. And I think Strahd's motivations that right. the the way that the Asimars were used here quite profanely does play into kind of the the continued lore though, mm-hmm. and I'll let Steve explain. Yeah, so genius. right, so so I was just trying to think, you know, I like tying characters into the the plot as much as possible, and thought, man, I'm I'm struggling to come up with something really interesting for Driessa, particularly where like I wouldn't want a Deva to be able to reach her. I want them to feel alone. So I decided. That she had in her backstory, the Red Wizards of Thay had kidnapped a bunch of Asimar and were experimenting on them. So I just decided that experiment was they had figured out how to travel the planes much easier, right? Because that's normally a very difficult spell to cast by basically brutally slaughtering Asimar. And so they were using them to traverse the planes. And so some Red Wizards had traveled to Barovia, Strahd caught them, tortured them, extracted that information... And was suddenly like, and one was delivered to me. So his, I changed his motivations from being a little bit kind of petty, I guess, to being pretty grand. He he had designs on conquering realms and had chosen the Forgotten Realms based on the these current heroes who were stymieing. Yeah, him. just to be right, just, just to be Strahd. just to be Strahd. And so he did kill Driessa, and they they stopped him just as he was performing that ritual. But it's important to remember that Asimar in our world now have been sort of usurped or, or kidnapped by the Red Wizards in such a profane way. It, um, so, Driessa did not make it out, but the rest managed to after defeating mm-hmm. Strahd. Uh, they did meet a particularly famous wizard in Barovia that I won't spoil in case you want to watch yeah, it. Yeah, go watch it. But it, they've also had the help of this wizard that they've been right. able to call upon, but Wayland and Esme... Lydia's kind of war cleric made it back out. Yep. Managed to tell the tale of what had happened to the heroes there, which is left one. There's rumblings at the spine of the world where Kothai is. Nithbis, though she's studying to defeat Tiamat, mm-hmm. fully feels a bit of guilt over sending adventurers right. potentially out of their depth. Um, yep. And. Uh, Esme and the uh, uniting of the elves also helped, which we'll go through with Princes of the Apocalypse right. uh, in the end. Cool. I think that summarizes Strahd pretty well. I think we can talk about some of the other themes that will continue to, to kind of play into that, but those are kind of, in my opinion, the main takeaways that are things that get referenced It'll a be lot in games. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to us here at Castle Mac. We're so happy that you came The point of this video is just to do a little bit of housekeeping on the break. That way, when you come back, we can just jump straight back into the action with whatever show that you were watching. If you're watching this live right now on Twitch, you can go ahead. Welcome back, everyone. (laughs) And as you all sit listening to this simultaneously melancholy and enchanting song, the blue glow now finding its way between these tall, slender tree trunks blocking your view, until finally, nearing the edge of the ruins, a ghostly figure of an elven woman 
floating about a foot off the ground, approaches, cocks her head when she sees you, eyes burning white. What are you doing here? And as she speaks, her voice seems to echo and reverberate off all of the columns and tree trunks. This is a wraith. I think Tula would reply in Elvish. We mean only to pass the night. She she cocks a head when you say that and responds in Elvish in a dialect you do not know. It's Elvish. Yeah. But it's like, it would be like us talking, like speaking English and like you know, old English. Well, I guess it'd be like 1061 or something. Yeah. <laughs> like some strange, like you know, doesn't yeah. work. It's a different language, yeah. completely. Yeah. And she says that to you, and then is like, "You've brought friends." She sort of glides forward towards you all, and as she approaches, her hair almost seems to be in water. It's just sort of flowing behind her. Is there um maybe an? Offering we could give you, or something we could help you with. She floats for a second and looks at you, and then her eyes seem to burn with rage again. And she's like, "That blade! You wield that blade!" And she raises a hand, and you see the coverings peel back on the sword. I thought this might happen. Like this blade was given to me rightfully. It doesn't belong to you. It never belonged to you! And as she says that, streaks of black sort of appear through the blue and then fade back to white. Her hovering seems to be almost more ethereal. I prefer that you go on floating somewhere else and we spend our night here. But if not, I'll send you on to whatever afterlife you want. This is my blade. As he says that and stands there, her fingers turn to claws. <laughs> and her hair just like blows backwards and light seems to be emanating from her face. I need everyone to make me a wisdom saving throw, please. Ooh. Have you seen that? Is it about being frightened? <laughs> yes, it is. It is, in fact, about being frightened. Well, I have advantage well, on You do that. indeed. Is it a wisdom save, you said? Yes, it is. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, Ooh, I need it. I'd like yeah. to spend a pre-roll, please. Okay, you can spend Corey's pre-roll. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, buddy. Uh, let's see, a wisdom save. Uh, I got a 16. Coach, what'd you guys get? 14. 24. Oh, okay. 11. The three of you, the three of you feel this like, ah! as it sort of like blasts past you. And in fact, you even see some of the cobblestones and some of the like loose stones sort of blowing backwards. You all take it. You feel an icy grip on your heart and you stare into her eyes for a second and see an elven afterlife devoid of joy and devoid of love and fear grips your heart. You are definitely afraid right now. Let's just switch to the battle map. Battle. Let's have a battle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Now, if you guys would arrange yourselves around the fireplace. Why are you trying to do I'm this not, to me? I'm not. Why? You are. <laughs> Is this like an around the butt thing? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? Lydia gets geeked out because our friend Luke tried to say up your button around the corner, but because he's Australian, he said around the butt and thought it meant the same thing. <laughs> All right, Sean, you're in charge of battle map. As this elven woman just, her fingers have turned to claws, her face has gone from fair to sallow, and she's just... <laughs> Let's everybody go ahead and roll some niche, huh? Ooh. That's not good. <clears throat> good. Um, what, what constitutes being frightened? Uh, you cannot move closer to the target, and you have disadvantage on attack rolls while you can see the target. So here we go. Hakathra, where are you at? 21. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> How about you, Everest? <laughs> 15. Okay. Pharaoh? I'm a 9. Tulak? 19. Okay. Tulak, you stand there just like... <laughs> Quaking a little bit. Um, this happened relatively quickly, but I think it was still early enough to where your armor wasn't on. Uh, I think your shield could still be on if you want it to be. Uh, otherwise, Hakathra, it is your turn as this ghostly apparition that looks a lot like this. Mm -hmm. 
I like her dress. Oh, uh, yeah. Where can I get I one? I like it. I guess it would make sense that while she was talking, you were, like, putting your arm down yeah. into your shield. Yeah, just kind of slinking on the <laughs> shield. Um, I will cast an Eldritch Blast. Ooh. Sean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that was impressive. Thank you. It was um, on the Lydia scale. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, a no. <laughs> All right, uh, an eldritch blast fires at her and seems to just pass through some of the gossamer. You guys got a hand of those out, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, with we that, did. Tulak, it is your turn as you stand here, somewhat quaking as you're staring at her. I'm gonna give this to Tulak for being a sparring partner and. Uh... Just a general bud. <laughs> cool. Being afraid. Being afraid. Um, I think he. I'm not gonna do much. I think he would frantically. I think he would back up for a second, almost startled that she. Pierced his mind with that, um... That shriek? That shriek. And he will hold action until an enemy is adjacent to him. Okay. Sounds good. You can totally do that. And with that, it is in fact her turn. And she is going to go short. Uh, Pharaoh. She seems intent as she stares at you. And at once she lunges with speed that you weren't expecting. This bolt of blue light and rage (laughs) coming at you. And she reaches out with her hands trying to grab you. 17 right now, my dude. On a scale from 1 to Bilbo. Got me. She got you. (laughs) Full Bilbo. (laughs) You take 10 points of damage as you feel her icy fingers pass through you and seem to be rending at some essence of you that you can't quite see. She's just sort of like, ah, like tearing into you. Do I get to make a save at my turn? You do, in fact, yes, but it is a disadvantage because she's visible to you. What am I looking for? No, not, not, that. not that. Everest, it is your turn. Wonderful. Everest will hit her with um, a guiding bolt. Okay. Eleven plus a six. That will do it. What type of damage is fire bolt or uh, guiding bolt? It is radiant. Radiant. Okay. Radiant. Cool. Why do you ask? Uh, I don't know. Six, seven, plus five. Twelve. How much does she take? She seems to take the full damage. As you just book in one hand, raise the other hand to channel the divine power. It glows for a second. What do you think your magic looks like? I told you, all my spell effects are blue. Blue, Also, yeah. I'm holding a shield. You have a shield. I forgot about that. Yeah. All right, so you got a you got a shield and one hand free, casting a spell into her, and you guys see this bowl just... And it hits her and sort of suffuses through the blue. Just she kind of lights up and glows even more strongly, looking like it would be easier to hit her. And Pharaoh, it is your turn, sir. Uh, question. Yep. Uh, with the canopy, are we in direct moonlight? You are not in direct okay. moonlight. Sorry. Yeah, I think yeah, the no canopy worries. is blocking you. Um, I know I've given you a question. really cool magic sword and not let you use it yet, but in time. Uh, okay. Well, I will. Draw still glowing. <clears throat> cool. And I will just attack with the sword, which is magical, if that matters. It does. So thank you. So that is a 19. That will hit. Okay. Four. 12 points of damage. Woo. You swing this elvish longsword, and as you do, it, whereas everything else seems to be passing through her, it seems to cut, and you almost have some resistance. And while you kind of push through it, you can see these, like, wisps of gossamer being ripped from her incorporeal form as you follow through. I'll spend a key point, then, as I pull the blade back to dodge. Cool. 
with my bonus action. Sounds good. Hakathra, we come back to you. Oh, wait. I did want to inspire Hakathra. Okay. Go Um, right ahead. Because she smells so good and is so soft. Oh, my God. And And so shiny. True. And I want to know about herself. Go ahead. Oh, my God. (laughs) So I will um, attack her with my Mage Slayer, and I get um, my sneak attack. Okay. Right. You do indeed. Cool. Two D6s. If I hit, even. Wow, thanks, Lydia. You're welcome. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Here, I'll try this one. Oh my god, okay. That is a hit. Cool. Um, 1d4? Every time I look at it, I'm like, 1d4? Plus your sneak attack, right? Yeah. Should just use a rapier, though. Um, so two, and ten, twelve. Plus, plus. Plus three. I'm going to, uh, yep. inspire, who hasn't been inspired? Uh, real quick, while you're deciding that, Hakathra, you come up behind her, your snake, like, comes down your arm, sort of just gripping tightly, it grips around your hand, holding the blade, and you take the sword and just kind of dig it into her, and as you do, your hand sinks deep into this gossamer, and it feels icy for a second, like, it just feels like you've plunged your hand in ice water, and you kind of rend the blade and rip it back, and as you do, she turns backwards to you, her head just turning fully on shoulders that aren't there, and it's like, <laughs> Well, that's fine, because I'm going to um, disengage and move back. Okay. Um, I inspired Everest for being a shield bro. Shield. Nice. Shield lid, lid shield. All right. Tulak, you are up, sir. You are, unfortunately, like, you're trying. I mean, you're just trying, like... But even seeing her head, like, spin around and wail, you just, like... Oh, no. I can't. Th- I think... He actually drops his longsword um, out of nervousness and then tries to pick up one of his javelins and throw it. And we will see how that goes. Cool. Yep, you can definitely do that. Uh, Nine plus five. 14. 14. 14. Sorry, I tried to ban somebody. What was that? Nine plus five, 14. That is uh, actually a hit. All right, then. Uh, For... Uh, nope, that's the wrong dice. So, nine damage. Stab you with a jabby. Okay, and that is... Stab and jab. Not a magical no, jabby, I imagine. Mag- not a magic jabby. Cool. Um, and then, let's see if we can't... Nope. All right, you take it, I mean, you're, you're quaking, and you throw it, and it passes through her, and her head still t- spun around, like spins around to face you with just these glowing white eyes. Anything else? No, he's still shaking in his boots. On her turn, you see her, like, sort of taking everything in, her fingers curling up like rigor mortis, and she sort of pulls in, and you all feel being pulled towards her. The ground, the rocks are all pulling in towards her, and she just... I need everyone to make me a constitution saving throw as she just lets this horrific wail. Am I still at disadvantage for this? Or uh, no, I don't think uh, saving throws. Is this a. This um, is not a fright effect. I got a 15. 6. 11. 12. Uh, does anyone want to reroll? I, I don't. I, I can't, but. What did you roll? 15. Alright. And you. Uh, Less than a 13 is a fail. I'll tell you that much. Yep. You're going to just have to take it. Okay. Um, I don't want to reroll. Okay. All three of you drop to zero hit points. Oh, shit. You all see just... I <laughs> want to reroll. <laughs> and they're like... Aah! And they all fall to the ground, eyes glowing white and like trails just coming up from what where the they fuck? fell, looking oh, up at her. Is it what, what kind of damage was that? Uh, it oh. was not damage. It was an ability of a banshee to make you drop to zero hit points with her whale. Everest, I need a death saving throw. All right, okay. That's how this game's gonna go. 
I got that is one this. past death saving throw. Pharaoh, you look around and see all three of your compatriots just hit the ground, eyes glowing and like trails of white that are now wisping towards her. Almost looks like they're feeding into her. And she turns to you like, give me the sword. She's looking like super gaunt and wispy. Like, uh, like, like less fading? of herself than we first saw. I will say this: as far as you can tell from a ghosty, she's looking pretty hurt. I'll give you the sharp end. How about that? Tight. I'm gonna give you an inspiration for that. Thank you. I will attack with my sword. Cool. Uh, that is a hit. Okay. Uh, that is six damage. Okay. Um, the blade again just rakes through and as... Go ahead. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to make that ten with Fury of the Small. Okay. So I'll add another four onto that. She's looking extremely rough. I'll spend a key point to do uh, unarmed strikes, two of them. Cool. There. Uh, do it up. Not magical at this point. Oh! oh! Snap! The crit. Well... Uh, that's eight more damage. From okay. Her. Oh god, you just you tear through her and like chop through again ice on your hand, like you just dug your hand in ice water. Her eyes begin like flashing and almost look like they're rolling back in her head and back around, and she's just like moving super erratically, like really, really bad. Get my last hit in. Oh! <laughs> And then minimal damage. Uh, nine more <laughs> damage. My dude, you look at her, and she's like, <laughs> ah, opens her mouth. You punch up with an open palm and just grab a handful of this gossamer and pull. And as you do, just <laughs> mist falls on the ground. You literally did exactly enough damage to kill her just now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this mist just sort of <laughs> dissipates into the ground, and the white sort of trailing lights return to their eyes. I mean, as she goes and they wake up, we'll be like, I said I earned this blade. Oh, I'm sorry, they don't wake up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, uh, you say that, and then your friends are still just breathing shallowly. Do we have healing potions? I've never asked. Yeah, I think it's I think it's reasonable to assume that, especially Hakathra has some. We're going to call it one for everybody right now. One for everybody. Nah, you know, we'll call it two for everybody. You're level four. You'd, you'd travel with healing uh, potions. All right, well so then. So two for everyone. So you're, so Hakathra. So I have two ready. You got yeah. two ready. Hakathra, I need a death saving throw, please. Why? We're still on an initiative. Double crit to save the party. Man. That is one pass. Two luck. A death saving throw, please. That is one <laughs> failed saving throw. Everest. That is a second yes. passed saving throw. Pharaoh, you can roll me a medicine check if you'd like to look at the state of your friends. This is just passive. Okay. So. I got a 12. Okay. Y you're just not sure. Yeah. They're all kind of laying. I, I mean, all of them seem to be breathing, but very shallowly. All right. I mean, I've known Catherine the longest, and I know that she's got healing potions, so I will use my action to run over, feed her, dump them. a healing potion in so Hakathra's mouth. 2d4 baby, plus baby it. 2. Yep. Uh, that's 7 back. Hakathra uses. <laughs> And you wake up from a place of absolute darkness, despair, and sheer loneliness. And you wake up and you see Pharaoh, and I think instinctually grab onto him, because you were ready to grab onto any being that would acknowledge your existence. It was truly a hell you were in. Ah, oh, that felt like mm, the end of my marriage to Mortimillion. Oh, God. As much as I want to hear about that, they need help. Tulak, my man. I need a death saving throw right now. That is one past death saving throw. One for one. And with that, there's no way for you guys to die, but you can dump healing potions into both of them. Actually, I would just um, use my healing hands on Everest since Perfect. they're the nearest to me. Perfect. So, so you can... Do you have two uses of healing hands? Just I'll, one. I'll use a healing word on him. Okay, perfect. You don't even have to roll it. You guys are going to get a long rest now. But towards the end, you all are just sitting there, completely eerie silence around you. After defeating this banshee, there are no sounds whatsoever. 
but the overall melancholy feeling of this place seems a little bit lifted. Two days and we've already experienced so much together. The three of you all dropped at the same time when she let out that wail. I don't like ghosts. I felt like I was incapable of doing anything and I don't know why. Before I fell, obviously. I mean, they're pretty scary. I mean... But I left my friends helpless. I could not move. I will do better next time. I promise. I'm sure you will. You all just have these, like, aching feelings in your bones. These terrible memories of this place you existed, even for a brief time, that literally felt so isolated from everything else you know. I just have to point out that you literally rolled exactly what you needed to kill her on double crits. That was pretty clutch. You saved the party there. I was like, oh boy, three went down. That's a pretty nasty ability that Banshees get to do. Good job, Gerblin. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. What do you all do now? Sleep. PTFO. I'll keep watch. You can all get your rest. I'll keep my blade out glowing just over my lap. I'll cool. stay up for a little bit and just kind of like pet his head like he was a good boy. I'll... Nice. <laughs> Almost like with cork's ears. Like, yeah. I like it. But not yeah. in a weird sexual yeah. way. Yeah, just rubbing, yeah. just an ear massage. Just, just a friendly, uh, neighborhood friendly ear massage. <laughs> yeah. I can't, you can't help but do that. <laughs> yeah. Friendly neighborhood gob massage. All right, love it. The rest of the night passes uneventfully. Go ahead. Real quick. Yeah. What was the the husband you said? More, More to mine. More to million. More to million. Uh, I guess while you're rubbing it and wearing the night, I'm like, okay, tell me about more to million. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to do it. Just into the night, I'll listen. All right. Fire dies down. Eventually, the sounds of the forest come back another hour or so later, and genuinely feels like you've lifted a, a weight from this place. And as the morning comes, it has a whole new light. The sun seems to be punching through the canopy, whereas before it wasn't, and everything seems bright and cheery. The flowers have bloomed. Even the ruins seem less like a tomb and more like a monument. Tight. It's a flap out there. I think it's the laundry flap. It's windy. Is that what's that happening? Is. Yeah, I hear it all the time down here, and I'm like, yo, who is it? <laughs> Terrifying. A laundry flap. <laughs> you ever check your laundry flap? <laughs> hey, I gotta go real fast check my laundry flap. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Oh, my laundry flap is open. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, everybody. <laughs> all right, you all wake up the next morning. What do you do? You ready to head? I checked the laundry flap. Yep. <laughs> I'll do a <laughs> laundry flap do a check. little meditation as I can tell that the sun's up, you know, standing on one leg, just balancing my sword. Cool. I think Everest is always very early to rise, like with the sun. Um, and they would just be going through their like ritual spell book just to cool. they know them all, like clearly by heart. Yeah. But it's just one of those, one things. Of those things that mm -hmm. brings comfort, especially because they're like so far from home and also really miss their family. Yeah, and probably in this particular moment, be like, man, I should have stayed with Mordecai. <laughs> I Also, I was thinking, like, how Everest learned the ritual spells. I think that each one had been passed down from, like, a oh, matriarch yeah. of it. the family. Yeah. So, like, the more that you collect just means that that's that many generations. That have, oh, that's like, cool. I actually down. think Fair would like to ask you about Please. it. I think <laughs> leaning over you... Is this your meditation? Um, just study mostly. I can't understand that writing. What are they? Oh, these are spells. They can be cast as rituals. Mm. They take a little time, but effective. Nice. Very effective. This book is a gift, and all the spells in it have been passed down from others in my family. Family's very important to me. I miss them. I 
think I can understand that. Everything I learned was passed down from my master, and my master was taught it, so I suppose it's similar. Not my family family, though. Well, sometimes you have to choose your family. I was born into mine, but that's not always the case, and I understand. Mm, that's true. Choosing your family. I like that. Mm. Family teaches you the most important lessons you'll have. I have this book, and it looks like you have your sword, and you know how to use it. Mm. I also learned how to not give in to the worst parts of myself, to find balance, not to turn away from the chaos that's within me, but to keep it in balance with order, like shadow and light, truth, wisdom. Families taught you very important things. I suppose she did. I'm going to make breakfast. Nice. I would give you all inspirations. You already have one lid, but oh, you both already yeah. have one. Well, never mind. So because I didn't spend mental inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Do you want to spend a real? <laughs> no. No. You're at zero hit points. Can I spend it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. You all pack up your belongings. Continue marching south. Now you're now expecting to reach Nightstone in about two days. Uh, the second day, in fact, passes completely uneventfully. In fact, it's quite pleasant. You pass many more elven ruins. You see some statues of cloaked figures. Uh, you see some statues that look very pleasant, just people who look like they're sort of making offerings or just very open and inviting. Um, uh, you, in fact, come across a statue that's fairly crumbled of Sehanin Mumbo. Um, you can immediately tell it's kind of a common pose. Uh, but you stop for a moment and, and... I think he would, he would leave a little offering of, um, silver. Cool. At the, at the foot of the, um, the statue. Yeah. Seeing that it's important to him mm -hmm. and it's like a statue of his deity, being a cleric, Everest would want to take part in that too. So they would leave cool. a little something that they have to. I mean, Everest doesn't really keep a lot of money because they don't really care about that. Yeah. They're not here to make gold, but whatever they have, they would leave. Yeah, I think you leave some trinket. Um, and you know who Sehanin Moonbow is. Oh, and of this, course. Yeah, the yeah. statue is, is her in her very beautiful form. She's wearing, you know, like a gossamer gown. I mean, most of it's kind of crumbled away, but yeah. you can still tell that she's she's sort of standing and, and, you know, her hair is down and she's got long hair, like almost down to her knees. I mean, you know exactly you know, what the statue is, despite it being very difficult to kind of... In fact, uh, you just brought up something. Uh, Everest isn't really super into collecting, like, currency, like mm -hmm. gold and stuff, but I do think that they would collect trinkets. Cool. Yeah, like, it makes total very, sense. they're very, very sentimental. I love it. Yeah, keep a little bag of trinkets that you find. In fact, instead of being paid, I think that they would sometimes be like, what do you have? <laughs> sure, I love it. Sounds good. I'll set my blade on it for a few moments. Just, I mean... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think you, you find some inner peace with that a little bit. And, uh, you know, while, while you don't know what divine what a divine spark might feel like, you do find a sense of true tranquility. I think for a moment, kind of everything fades away. You can hear some of your master's teachings telling you all about light and shadow and truth and wisdom. And uh, I think you all just have a kind of pleasant rest here for the time. In fact, as you all walk away from the statue, you look and you can see those same two white, evanescent deer sort of watching you from a distance before they bound off. Are those deer ghosts, too? I don't think so. They did not give me the same chill I got from the childhood stories of my people. That woman did. They just strike me as something more than natural. Mm. Maybe not not living, but more. I do not know quite how to put it into words. I think that a paladin such as yourself has intuition about a divine sense, and he would know. Good to know. <laughs> I think if 
they were ill-hearted, they would have struck when they had the opportunity. I don't necessarily mean ill-hearted. I didn't know if all ghosts were uh, angry or not. No. They're not. Fair enough. The only stories of ghosts we have with my people are very frightening. Used to keep children from doing things they should not. Goblins don't tell ghost stories. They tell stories about humans. <laughs> Everest will laugh at that. <laughs> and as you all are walking and talking and Everest lets out a bellow, you hear a fair voice come from the trees ahead. I'd stop right there unless you want to find yourself filled with arrows. No, I don't want that. That would not be preferred. Everybody can make a perception check for me if you'd like. Okay. Sure. Uh, I got a 12. Yep, same. Hakathra, as everyone else stops, you sort of look up and you can see in a gray cloak that almost just blends into the background an elvish archer standing on a small platform atop one of the Duskwoods, and you sort of scan around and see a second one some ways over, arrows trained on you. And as you do, you see at first what looks like a shimmering figure pulls a cloak back and is appearing nearly right in front of you, about 20 feet ahead of you. Mm. You said a shimmering figure? It was shimmering because as it pulls the cloak oh, okay. off and then like sort of fades into view. Like, got it, got it. wow, that was, how was that right there? Um, this figure has fair blonde hair, stout chin, holds his head high, long pointy ears, and he's got his hands on a long sword at his hip. He wears all black leather armors, but for a yellow sash around his waist that kind of hangs down on one side. I will telepathically communicate and say, <clears throat> Let me be very clear that we do not intend to harm anything or anyone while we are here, unless it is to protect ourselves. And that we may... You're be saying that's all telepathically? Mm -hmm. okay. And that we may be of any assistance needed to you if necessary if that would ease your mind and also allow you to put down your weapons. Mm. Roll a persuasion check. Fourteen. Mm. He regards you for a second, <clears throat> and you all see this strange tense, like, nothing that's going on as he stares at Hakathra. And he's like, lower your weapons. It's like, what is your business here? Passing through. Passing through. The realm of the Deepening Moon. You know this is elvish territory, don't you? Well, I'm from Cholt. Hmm. How quaint. <laughs> what have you, goblin? It's the quickest way to get to Nightstone. Hmm. Nightstone, hmm. No point returning there now. Picked clean it's been. By what? The question really is, what hasn't gotten in there? Acacia, come forward. You see an elf woman also kind of pull off a cloak, and she's holding a thin strand of elvish rope, and she walks forward, and behind her now, emerging from behind trees, you see uh, six humanoid figures of various sizes walking with silk bags over their heads and bound by this rope. Uh, I, I mean, are they is it too far away to discern uh, like what type of humanoids? Like, uh, like I'll, I'll tell you this. Orcs look I'll tell way. you this. Yeah, like, you know that one is short and stout and you can see a beard protruding from the bottom. <laughs> okay. Um, another one, uh, another two of them, their bags are strangely shaped over the top of their heads. And uh, then three of them are extremely short individuals, like maybe children. Although or you happens. notice you notice hairy feet. Oh, okay, I was, like, I was like, yeah, like definitely children or halflings. I'll say this: of one of the halflings, it looks much smaller than the okay. other two. And he turns back to you, hand on his blade, and sort of smiles. Says, "My name's Kieran. Normally you're not welcome here, but we've just endured a battle." took some losses, so I'll give you all the opportunity to exit the woods by the quickest means, which would be due west into the river. You can follow the banks south. If you're heading to Nightstone, I wouldn't waste your time. This is a gift. 
He appreciated the gift. Uh, quick question. A battle happened. That, uh, tiny one, the tiniest, doesn't look like they could have done much damage to you. Spoils of war. That right. Got a problem, goblin? I sure fucking do. Hmm. How about you? It's like, if you really want to die in this forest so far from your homes, I'll allow it. Puts his hand on his blade. The woman behind him also kind of has a hand on her blade, and you hear the, the tension of bowstrings up in the trees. My master told me that a serious threat demands a serious response. But looking at all of you, the only thing I can think of is eat my butt. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking pathetic. <laughs> well, I think it's time to set up the battle map. Help me, help me clear this. Eat my butt. Eat my butt. Right. I think we found the title for the episode. All right. If you all could please place yourselves, uh, we're going to say just across, just across the ford. <laughs> we could have just gone out of there. No. This is the elf that faces you. Uh, wants a noble man. There is an elf <laughs> archer up in that tree and another elf archer up... Oh, that's not the elf archer. Listen, I don't like it when you show me the ugly parts of elves. Uh, in, anyone who would like can make a uh, either religion or history check to see if you can figure out what their black armor and yellow sash indicate. I'm sure. I'm sure I like to do it. History it was, or what? History or what? History or religion. religion. <laughs> I would like to make a religion. Got, who does not one. have a bead? I got bead? a... I got a... Who does not have a bead? 23. I got 23. Okay. Do you no longer have a bead? I no longer have a bead. I am bead. well read okay. if you have a bead. Um, there you go, Sean. I, I turned it. <coughs> you. So sorry. What did you roll, Sean? Uh, I just kind of let. Okay. You immediately like as it happened, something clicked. So like, oh yeah, I was reading up on like the different groups in here, and you remember a singular paragraph about a group of elves known as the Eldreth Valuthra, who are essentially elvish extremists. Mm. They are Listen, dicks. Everest hates extremists. Yeah. <laughs> Have trouble with Cammy there. Jesus. Camera Diaz is a is a new. Camera Diaz is a it's work great. in progress. Look at Camera Diaz. It looks like that robot dog. I know. <laughs> we, we were anthropomorphizing Camera Diaz that. earlier. All right, I can't get the second one in there. That's right, all right. right. Eldreth Valuthra are here, and so with that, friends, it is time to roll. And I'm going to have boss for that guy. Lieutenant is for her. Aikishia, you heard the name was, and her um, attendant. And then enemy one are going to be the archers up in the trees. Yeah. I need to so roll why room. am I rolling nothing but threes? <clears throat> there we go, baby. Because bad news comes in threes. Is that too high? Whoa! Oh, I wasted no, it. Sitting past the camera. <laughs> All right, I gotta roll these individually here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pretty good rolls out of those guys. All right, here we go. Hakapra, where are you at? Even. Five. Okay. Uh, Lydia. Everest. Eighteen. <laughs> Okay, Pharaoh. 18. Uh, I got a 14, excuse me. Tulak? 19. <laughs> Almost died from an M&M. Oh, no. Don't do that. oh, the like oh. deep M&M coating throat? No, a chunk of peanut. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> like when chocolate just melts yeah. right yeah. in your throat? Like when you get, yeah, it's M&M throat. What a treat. All right. Do you have this too? Yes. Tulak. It is your turn as you look, and the elf in front of you draws a longsword and holds it out, sort of ceremonially almost. Oh. Well, as my interact, I think he'd draw his own <clears throat> longsword, too. Cool. Is this easy crossing? Uh, I think board? the ford is going to be difficult. All right, it's so just stones that you've kind of got to run across. 10, 20, 30, 35, because I'm... Yeah, you do have 35, you old wood elf. Um, and then we will make a swang on him. Swang. Swang. Swang it. Oh, my God. 
not. Swing again. Swing again. Swing. Oh my god, you suck at swinging. You swing, and he, he holds the sword out until you approach, and he cocks his eye, and he smiles, and you swing the sword, and he just <laughs> blocks it, bing, and he pushes it back, and he sneers at you, and he goes, Get out of your half breed. <gasps> um, Mud as a boy. bonus action. Yep. I would like to uh, shove him with my shield. Okay. Oh, do you have the shield mastery feet? No, uh, that's the magic shield. I get to choose one of them. Oh, the yeah. You right. always have a shield. Mm-hmm. He's Never shield leave home Michael. without it. He's shield Michael, Michael shield. All right, we're rolling opposed athletics, or he can roll acrobatics. Well, it's going to be athletics. Oh. Oh. You try to you try to shove him. He grabs the shield and twirls it around and actually spins you around, puts his arm around your neck, and just is like, <laughs> and lets you go. You can smell his breath. Mm-hmm. It, it smells, smells like, like Eminem, like deep throat Eminem. <laughs> Everest, don't ever deep throat Eminem. <laughs> oh no! Okay. Everest, go. Fuck him. I'm gonna do an uh, um, um, a guiding bolt. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, eat my butt, but I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it and lux it okay. on. Okay. Uh, the battle cry of the sword coast, I finally know it. Plus a six. Uh, as you cast it, you see he's holding his blade, it comes at you, and he raises his hand, and a blue shimmering field appears, and the bolt slams into that shimmering field. That. Mm-hmm. You got a 20? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Pharaoh, it is your turn. Unless you'd like to do anything else, Everest. I would, but I can't, like, with the rules. Right. Pharaoh was about to pull the bow, but sees Tulak get spun around and pulls the sword. I mean, as soon as you do, he's like, what? I have 40 foot moves, so I yep. can definitely get there. Cool, you get in there. You see a shimmering field between you and he. Okay. I earned it, unlike you. I will attack. That won't do it. Mm-mm. So I will re-roll. Okay, actually. cool. So let's see. I need I need a 14 at least. If a 20 didn't get it, we'll go with the next up. No. Yeah. I mean, you swing his... I mean, he parries it very effectively. Uh, I will... I'll go ahead and spend a key point to take the dodge action. Okay, cool. That's my bonus. On his turn, he kind of holds the sword up and looks between you. He's like, and he makes a decision and attacks you, Pharaoh. He does attack twice with his blade. Uh, This is the first one, and you dodged, so that's a miss. Mm -hmm. And on the second one, he misses again. Yeah, he sort of... Yep. Glance, and I think we get two pre rolls. Ooh. Oh, Maddie, what's up? Thank you, Maddie. And Drifting Shade, thank you guys. That is two pre rolls. Appreciate that. Um, he swings at you and bring, like you block him back, and he, he smirks a little bit, looks a little bit impressed, and then he starts swinging the blade around, and you start to hear a hmm. And as he spins it, it seems to make music like hmm. And it's almost beautiful as he's just spinning it around acrobatically. He doesn't deserve that. Can I choose to know what a blade singer is? Just I think that's fair. By yeah. I'll be like, blade singer. Hakathra, you were up. All right, I am going to. What's my spellcaster modifier? Plus. Okay, cool. Um. Mm-hmm. I think I am going to. <sighs> oh, okay. Mm, that's happening. Huh? Hey, this is normal to get across. No, that is slow. Yeah, so, if I was get here, right behind me. How much movement is that? This though? is thirty. That'll be thirty. Okay, so that's thirty, and then. Jesus Christ. <laughs> just take down that blade zinger. All right, I'll just... Does this land? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally fine. Cool. I'm going to get there, and I'm going to... Um, 
booming blade. Can I booming blade and get my sneak attack? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to totally booming can. blade this baddie. Uh, he's kind of following with the blade along. And I'm rolling with advantage just for fun. Yeah, that's the same thing. <laughs> okay. Because I decided I should. And I'm going to uh, use my rapier on this one. Cool. Really? You don't want to use Mage Slayer on a dude using magic? Huh? He's a dude using magic. What is it? I, I still don't have the thing with... Uh, we'll, we'll worry about it later. Okay. All right, so uh, what'd you roll? 16. Okay. Uh, is his shield still active? It's not, but it is now. As you, you go to stab, he turns towards you and he spins the blade in a circle and it leaves a blue sort of light. And you... Your attack is deflected by a magic shield. Listen. So then I... That was 30, right? Uh, that was more than 30. It was 30 to get through the... 30 to get through the you've done You've done 45 so far. So I have like 15 left? You do indeed. I'll kind of like tuck back in there. Cool, no problem. He does not get an attack of opportunity because he spent his reaction cast. And field. since I still have a bonus action, I will bonus action hide. You don't, you don't have a bonus action. You bonus action, you bonus action dash. Oh yeah, that's right. I definitely did and remembered it. What's his name? Uh, he didn't Kieran. say. Oh, did he say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kieran. It was Kieran. Kieran? He did say. Kieran. Kieran? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, with that, it is the archers' turns. Um, each of them are going to rain arrows down upon the flanks. Uh, the first one shooting at you, Hakathra. I'm giving you extra bonus cover for being in that tree like that. For being in the tree. Yep. What's your armor class? Uh, 37. Okay. Cool. 13. <laughs> 13. Okay. Uh, wow, they actually both hit you. What the? F yeah, man. Mm. Elves is. Elves are good archers, you know? Uh, you will take eight points of damage as you, you kind of tuck in and hear two, two, two fired back to back. One hits you in the thigh, the other one kind of grazes your left leg. Uh, this one is going to fire at you, in fact, Everest. I'll look up a thing on Beyond. Oh, they definitely both got gotcha. you. But I'm an armor class 29. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? They rolled 15 damage on that. Fucking shit. You're like, you've got your shield up, and they, I mean, they're just good shots. It's, both of them kind of dig into your chest a little bit. Um, it is now these lieutenants' turn. Oh, so they're British now, huh? Yeah, they're British elves. Uh, they sort of rush up to his side, drawing their short swords. Uh, the first one attacking you, Pharaoh, you did dodge, correct? Yep. Missing My hardly. Stomach. The other okay. one attacking you, a two lock. And missing. This one comes swinging at you, and you just raise your shield boom, and kind of push it back. It adopts this like very defensive um, position. The other one swings at you, you're blocking still his blade. You kind of twirl around and block that one coming in. And with that, we're top of the initiative order, and two lock, it is you, sir. Alright. Uh, we're going to swing at. Saint asshole Kieran over here. Um, we're gonna use a pre-roll. Do it up. Oh, that is a hit. That is a definite hit. Mm. And we're gonna throw a divine smite Fuck in there yes. too. Oh, smite yeah. his ass. Smite <laughs> his ass. He's got no time for Saint asshole. Ooh, that was yeah. a good roll. Alrighty. That's twenty on the dice. Twenty on the dice plus five, my man. So 20. that's twenty-five. Thank you. <laughs> what are you, like a human calculator? It's almost like a yard. Uh, <laughs> you you look for a spot. I mean, you're calculating him. In fact, he fights very similar, frankly, to the way the Pharaoh fights. And so as Pharaoh's blocking, you're like, yeah, I know how to get around this. And you lunge right at the right time. Punches past his blue crackling shield, digs into his side, and a thunderous just <laughs> smite. And he sort of ah! kind of recoils from it. And for a moment, his blade song ceases. Bonus action. Yep. We gonna shove again. Hell yeah. Oh! You wanna knock him down? Oh yeah. You absolutely Critical do. He, he's, he sort of looks at you and you just take your shield and boom! And he falls to the ground. You smell of piss. <laughs> Everest. Everest. Um. These. These homie girls. The lieutenants. Mm -hmm. What are they? What's their story? What are they like? <laughs> <laughs> They're nasty looking elves. One of them you heard was uh, Akishia. They were born in And she was the one leading the people. Mm. Oh, I don't like her then. Okay. Fair enough. 
Hmm. Which one? Which one's Akisha? One on the left, on my left. Okay. So to get across here, It'd be thirty. Yeah. Or thirty to get to the last square of it. Okay, I have 30 walking, so I'll get there. I can't quite get all the way to her. Yeah. So you're, yeah, you're back up, yeah, you're right there. Am I in the water then? Yeah. yeah. But next turn you won't It's suffer 10 it. per square of water. Yeah. Okay. So we went 10, 20, That's and then 30. Saying, yep. Okay, um, while he's down on the ground, can I have him make me a wisdom save at disadvantage? Why does he make it a disadvantage? Oh, because of the die. Nice. Good use of it. I just didn't know. Don't don't look at me like that. I forgot about the pre-rolls. He fails, in fact. And he's damaged? He is damaged, yes. Good for him. Good use of those pre-rolls. Thank you, everybody. Ooh, pretty good roll, too. Neck. Brodic. As he's laying there, you hear him like, ah, and he clutches, and he's like, the bells! Clutching at his hair a little bit. Pharaoh, it is your turn with your quarry on the ground. I will attack him at advantage. Yes, you will. Uh, so, that is a 21. That hits him. That's what you need. Uh, nice. that, I will add the Fury of the Small onto sure. this one to make it 10 damage. Sure. That's pretty handy. Yeah. For Sean rolls, especially. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then I'll spend a key point to do two unarmed strikes as I raise my foot and... Oh, yeah. That's a That's hit. A definite. Oh, no. I smacked it with oh, my hand. I do that all the time. Six more, and it. then... Okay. More. Uh, that one did not. That one is a miss. You just you take your blade and line it up, and he's trying to recover, and you just like right into his side, pull the elvish blade back. The the blue runes now filled with with blood in the channels. And you raise your foot, come down on a knee, hear a crack, try to kick the other one, but he kind of just rolls out of the way. Dust kind of kicking up on his clothing. On his turn, he will stand up. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't want to know. Uh, I... I need the three of you to make me a dexterity saving throw, please. Nope. Nope, that's not going to do it. Uh, Dex? Yep. Dex? Oh, I'm sorry, not you. I'm sorry, it's the three of you guys. Oh, good, all because the, the I would have failed it. Me? Yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm going to retry before I lose I all it. my okay. hit points. I'm just going to do a practice roll a with these again. Seems, seems good. I these are bad boys. Okay. All pretty good, everybody. Uh, all of you pass and take three fire damage as he raises Ow. his sword and just raises a hand and sheets of flame come shooting from his finkins. <laughs> finkins. <laughs> from his finkins. That is his whole turn. Ow. His whole turn. Hakathra, we're over to you. Cool. I'm going to swoopy doopy around. I calculate I could definitely make it over here in 30, passing around them. So that's yep. my normal. So step one, that's my normal movement. Normal okay. movement, got it. Step two, I'm going to use the necrotic shroud, and I'm going to um, do my transformation, and I look like a giant snake. Tight. So I need them all to make Ooh. a DC 13 charisma saving throw. Oh, my God. That's, or be frightened. That's awful. Okay. Uh, let me see what they are. These guys aren't very charismatic. Charisma saves are horrible. All right. So this is the two on the ends. Uh, one on the left. I keep the passes. The other Fuck one fails. You, and as for him. Fuck you, Akisha. He also fails. Sick. As you just. And I mean, you guys are like, what the hell? She turns. Uh, a maybe giant. Like a giant. Just, yeah. The snake sort of <sighs> comes up. And, uh, and out of her. I'll start laughing. <laughs> Because he knows. He knows what's up. Um, so they're frightened, and it lasts for one minute. And so that is my action. Then I am, as a bonus action, going to disengage, disengage. Cool. and move back just a little. Okay, sounds good. And so the two on the right are frightened. Mm. As long as they can see you disadvantage. Uh, with that, it is the archer's turn. Uh, that archer fires upon you. Oh, what's the, is it like 30 foot range or something? For... What's it called? Your terror. Oh, uh, all within 10 feet to make okay, a charisma. Okay. It's just necrotic just shroud. Fine. Okay, cool. Uh, so that archer takes a shot at it's you. It's a modified necrotic shroud for my... Yeah, yeah no, I, I, okay. I loved it. Alright, just it for awesome. the people at home who are yeah. going to be like, actually... It does not a snake. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> that archer takes a shot at you, however. It does not a snake. Magic missile. <laughs> What's your armor class? 
37. I think we determined that a 7 got you last time. So, two arrows strike true, and you will take 13 points of damage. That's not. Let's say we did. Uh, And the other archer continues to shoot at you, Everest, since you're an easier target. That's not true. I'm an archer. One. If I if it's something that I can end as a bonus action, but it doesn't say concentration anywhere on it. It's not. I don't think it is. Okay. What's it called again? I'll just look it up. It's It's an ability, not a spell. Yeah, yeah, it's an ability, so you don't have to do any concentration. Okay. Uh, let's see. That was them. With that, it goes to the others. Do they get to roll like at the end of the of each turn? Oh, it just lasts for one full on minute. Flight, oh, flightless. Or ones, until yep. the end of my next turn. Mm-hmm. Find you until the end of your next turn. Yep. Okay. Cool. Transformation lasts for one minute. So everything else. The instant you transform. So everything else is more just you being spooky, right? Oh, but you deal extra damage too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cool. That's a really cool ability. I didn't even know that existed. All right. So, uh, Aikishia, uh, sees you beating down Kieran and does try to attack you with her blade. Let's try. I think she got yeah, me. Yeah, gotcha. Four points of damage, sir. Uh, the other one does try to attack you, Tulak. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, she needed to roll with disadvantage. Oh, no, Aikisha was not. No, nope, it's afraid. this one. This one is afraid and tries to attack you, Tulak. Not landing it, I don't believe. Not 18. Uh, and that is them. With that, we're back to the top of the turn, Tulak. Uh, still gonna try and strike down Saint Asshole over here. Okay. Well, that ain't it. Yeah, the two is probably not going to do it. How's it two, man? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll follow through with the shield on the uh, the backswing coming back around. Okay. On him? Yep. That's nah, probably not going to do, but opposed athletics, right? Uh, or he can roll acrobatics. All right. Well, uh, it's plus five for me. So 11. 11. What did I roll? A five? Yeah. You got him. He knocks to the ground, if you wouldn't mind knocking him down for me. <laughs> you just keep shield bashing. Bonus action shield bashes are the worst. Why did I do that? <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, with a... that, we are over to you, Everest. Tight. Okay. So Everest is going to sidestep, and this is the one that's like not frightened. Yeah. 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 Oh, they need it. They're now they lose their fight at the end of your next turn. Okay, got okay. it. So they're well, still Ikeisha. Right now. Yep. I'm going to inflict wounds her. Oh, okay, nice. Was that a touch attack you yeah, got to make or something? It is. I'm a touch. Cool. Touch her. With your trunk? With my trunk. Oh, yeah. Trunk you, reach out with the trunk. I will reach out with the trunk. Reach out and trunk face. Nine plus six? Fitting. That, uh, nine plus six, 15. Let me do it, let me do it, let me do it, let me do it. That is not a hit. <gasps> she kind of raises her long sword. <laughs> No. Puts, puts a second hand on it and and pushes back your snout. Pushes back your snout. Your proboscis. Your prehensile nose. No. No. Uh, okay. Pharaoh. All right. I am making an attack at advantage because he is prone. Uh, that is a 21. That is a total hit. Four. Ten damage. As he lays there, you take your sword around, wield it double-handed, close your eyes for a second, strike true, right through his heart. He just (laughs) stops breathing as his sword falls on the ground. A faint glow to his sword. I'll look over at Acacia. (laughs) (laughs) And I'll spend a key point to make two unarmed attacks on her. Cool. You can move him if you want. Oh, yeah. Oh, we go He is dead. So the boss is dead? Boss is dead. I absolutely missed on the first one to Akishia. Second one I got. Uh, four, eight points of damage on okay. Akishia. Uh, you spin around and just... Who like, are you attacking with your unarmed, right? Yeah, yeah. just unarmed. You just spin around, kick her like right in the gut. She kind of bowls over like... As she's blocking Everest's snout attack. <laughs> boss is dead. Hakathra, you were up. Still um, in a terrifying snake form, I imagine. Oh, yeah. well, it just looks like a... Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And this one is still frightened of me, right? Uh, oh, no. Until the end of your turn, correct. Yep, so um, do I get... What's the deal with frightened? They get disadvantage on attack rolls against... Uh, yeah, they get disadvantage on attack rolls while you're visible to them, basically. Okay, but I don't get advantage on... No, you okay. don't. Okay, and this one's Akisha? Uh, Akisha? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I guess it doesn't even... And they're both pretty... This... Akisha's taking damage, the other one is not. Okay. I'm just going to make Akisha now the boss one. Yeah, that's instead, fine. So we can... No problem. So we know which one to kill. Got one. Okay, well then I'm going to move up, and I am going to make an attack with... Um, Mage Slayer. Camera Diaz. How you doing, Camera Diaz? Okay, so I'm going to make an attack with Mage Slayer. Cool. That's a hit. Yeah, I think so. 18. You got her, yep. Okay. And so that is going to be, first of all, sneak attack, right? Uh, Yep, sneak attack. And 1d4 plus 3 and my extra 4 points of necrotic. Yeah, cool. So. Love it. That's going to be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 plus 4 points of necrotic. 21. She She is not down, but she is looking real bad. And. (laughs) Hold on. Let me see. Let me check her. She is still up, but she is looking rough. (laughs) And bonus action. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, bonus action disengage. Oh, yeah, you just come up, find the spot, push the dagger in. You guys see sort of black smoke pouring out around her. Some kind of, she coughs and some smoke comes out of her mouth. She's looking rough, but still active. One could say it was almost like a viper. So strike. no longer frightened. No longer frightened, got it. But I, my form still lasts for a whole minute. Cool, got it. Uh, Aikisha attacks you, Pharaoh. Uh, Is it? Archer Boy's first? Yes, I'm sorry. Yep, it is Archer Boy. No. Uh, that Archer Boy now firing on you, Tulak. Mm-hmm. Can't get you over Cameron Diaz. <laughs> yeah. Cameron Diaz blocks you. What's your armor class again? 18. Both get you. Uh-huh. Mm, uh, 13 points of damage. Each of those is how? Each of those is so minus three. Minus three, gotcha. So just take away six. Uh, this one continues to fire on... Uh, actually, you know what? Evens Everest odd Sakathra. Evens Everest. Uh, this will both get you. Wait, how's that nine gonna get me? Or what's your armor class? Sixteen. Oh yeah, gotcha. They're plus eight. Seven. You take eleven points of damage, my dear. They're the good fuck? archers. They're out. I have one hit point left. They're known for being excellent archers. Uh, and with that, the lieutenant, uh, Aikisha attacks you, Pharaoh. No. Oh. And no. She bad. Oh. And no. I get it. Got no. a crit. <laughs> rolled, rolled like Sean. Take five points of damage on a crit. How's that feel? But she's just like, Aah! and she swings, and you can tell she's fighting it because she's she's hurting. She's like, her weight isn't being carried properly anymore. Uh, to lock this one on you still. Oh, double twankies. Double crits. There you go, for 12 points of damage. So six. Uh, uh, no, you don't have it. You're minus one. three. Oh, minus three. It yep. was just one crit hit. Right. That's right. All right, and with that, Tulak, you are up, sir. All right. Um, well. well, we'll attack uh, the lieutenant that is hurt. Aikisha. Aikisha, yep. Yeah. We'll hit Ikea. Hmm. So to Ikea. You will not. She okay. just ping, blocks the blade. Yeah, it kind yeah. of spins it around. Looks like she's regaining her composure. Ikea, well, as she tries us. to regain her composure, we're going to attempt to smack like her in the, the face with a shield. Plus five, so. You got her. You got her. All right. God damn model's going to get worn out from getting knocked on the ground. At least it comes after your activation. Uh, Everest, you're up. Stop and get some Swedish meatballs. Mm hmm. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but we were making we a joke about, about how the forest is like Kia now. Ah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Um, Everest is going to bonus action healing potion. Okay, yep. <laughs> House rule here at Castle Mac, if you didn't know. Bonus actions on potions. To glug glug. To glug glug. Yep. To do the you, glug you do one, you Bonus do... action glug glug. How many glugs before a gulp? <laughs> Six. Six. How many dupes per... Did you did you see the conversation where we discussed how many chuggas before you choo choo? <laughs> the real answer is two groups of three. I'm just asking. I thought he Chad. was dead. No, I just made uh, IKEA show that so we could tell. Three which sets one. of chugga chuggas before. Okay, so what are you doing with your action? I was like for Lakeisha, Aikisha. Aikisha. 
Whatever. We just titled the forest Ikea. <laughs> Alright. What do you do? Can... Uh, wisdom safe? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, past it. Bitch. Pharaoh. That's some nice vocal fry. Thank you. Right. <laughs> and I'll try to try to get her. Cool. Oh, on the ground. It's a nice That's little combo so you guys so got cool. going on. That is a hit. Mm-hmm. For nine damage. Okay. Just dehydrated. And I will... I'll spend a key point. To Last key twice. point. So here's. That's a hit. Uh, for eight more. Uh, she's looking very bad. For six more. How would you like to kill this, Lieutenant? Uh. I think. I think I stabbed. I think I hit this way, and I mean, I think I just did that last elbow. Elbow drop. Crush. (laughs) And I mean, so it's like, and I'll look over at the other. (laughs) Look over at the other one. The other one looks to be, like, starting to back away a little bit now. Hakathra, you were up. Attack with my mage slayer. Attack. 16. That is not a hit, I'm afraid. I'll say what? Four. Mm-hmm. 16 <laughs> doesn't quite do it. <laughs> Hears you coming, turns around and sh- kind of swings the blade around. You're just not able to find a purchase. With that, it is archers, and the archers are continuing to fire on the flanks. Tulak, this is on you. Mm-hmm. Are you uh, fucking kidding me? I just moved to the fucking flank. Both of those hit you, Tulak. Uh, that's going to be um, 13 points of damage, goes to seven. And this one is on you, Hakathra. Both get ya. I'm down. Yeah? All right. Hakathra just <laughs> hits the ground. And with that, it is the lieutenant's turn. The lieutenant looks hesitant for a second, like, <laughs> and then finds her resolve, steps back in, uh, but does seem to have it out for you, Pharaoh. Damn blade, man. That'll get you. Got me. For three points of damage. And she's looking like ah, just furious right now. Uh, okay, we're over to you, Tulak. Alright. Um, same story, different elf. Oof. We're going to uh, attempt to chop this one up now. Yep, chop, chop. It, man. Not like that. I'm not going to do it with a one. And then, bonus action. Second verse, same as the first. Yep. One more time. Yeah, I don't think you're going to beat oh, you, you, boom. My man just pushing with his heirloom shield, just knocking folks off their feet. Oh, man. Everest, it is your turn. I'll healing word my girl. Mm-hmm. I'll do it at level two. I like her. Okay. I like Ooh, her. Quite sounds a bit. good. Yeah. Ooh, there you Five, go. I have six. Seven, eight, nine points back for you. Mighty nice of you. Hakatha, you just <laughs> eyes wake up as you're laying in the dirt there. Thank you. And you're welcome. your action. Okay, so um nine. This little This person on the ground is the other lieutenant. Yep. Not the one that was holding the, uh, the leash, though. No. no. But it doesn't matter, because she's on the ground, and yep. they're all just as bad. I guess I'm not going to touch her with anything, because I just used a, an action, or my bonus action. Use your bonus action. So I have to use so. a cantrip. Got to use a cantrip, yep. Um, that's fine. Actually, you know what? Fuck these archers. Can I have this archer up here and make me a wisdom save? You totally can. Stay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, what is it trying to beat? My, oh, sorry, my spell save yep. is, um, 14. Failed. Nice. Not damaged, though, right? Not damaged. So it's an 8. Yep. Ooh. Max. Max. Now it's damaged. Max damage. For a second, you see the arrow kind of come down. Uh, Pharaoh. All right. I'm hopping in here. Uh, while I'm laughing, I'm going to be like, ah, 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 ah. 
Yeah. It must be difficult. Your yeah, captain and yeah, the lieutenants fought to a disgusting goblin. Nice. Yeah, that's a hit. Oh, wow, for 12 damage. Oof. And Dang. then uh, I will make my single bonus yep. action yep. attack. Oh! oh! Uh, for eight more damage. All right, sweet. Yeah, you just lay into her. Yeah, no more tool timing. Okay. Uh, Hakathra. Uh, she's like trying to dodge the blows and her face is just like hot, just so red. Hakathra. I'll get up. So she's down. Mm Mm-hmm. Get her. I'll go over. Get her, Ray. Get her. And... I'll try to... With advantage. Uh, this is, okay, with advantage, because she is prone. Mm-hmm. Do the rainbow one. There you go. It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. And um, if I get it, I get a sneak. Yes, you sure do. What a sneaky snap. Oh, fucking God. Lydia. Oh, God, the dice. <laughs> I <laughs> knew I didn't want that rolls. fucking rainbow. Dice have not been good. Uh, it is the archer's time. I no, I duck behind this way. I'm, okay. I'm going in. No problem. It is the archer's, and unfortunately, Everest, this one's shooting at you now. This is both. That's what you get. You, got turn. you turn this time as you hear him coming. Raise the shield and just. Ping, ping. Uh, this one does fire at you too, Lock. Yep. Gets you with one. Uh huh. Four. Eight minus three. Still up. And with that, it is this lieutenant's turn, and I'm going to do a thing. She is so hurt and so enraged. I'm going to roll a d20. If I get an 11 or higher, she's going to get two attacks with advantage. If I roll a 10 or below, she's going to turn around and run. Okay. This is her fight or flight. We're simulating fight or flight right now. She's oh yeah, she mad. She mad. Just ah! and she looks at you all, and she's like, "Your filth." You're filth! You've inherited this earth! Ah! And she swings on you, two lock. Or two lock, gotcha. Got a crit. Well. Like, was this in the PHB and on what page? Nope. I like it. This was in the SHB, Stephen's Handbook. <laughs> Stephen's uh, Handbook. She will do 10 points of damage to you, minus three. Stephen's <laughs> Handbook. <laughs> I'm glad someone picked up on it. None of y'all fucking recognize it. I'm down. And with the other one, she turns on you, Pharaoh. Uh, Gets you. uh, Okay, yeah. I think. What's your I'm a 17. Yeah. Uh, Actually, no. No, she doesn't. I'm sorry. She swings you. You block with the blade, but this was her death throw. You block with the blade, lock eyes with her. How do you kill her? Uh. Man, I actually think I'll. I'll do the spin and then the spin around going upward and I mean the head's going just whoosh. she stands does the classic like stand there for a second and then the body falls to the ground and with that you see the archers sort of pull their cowls down and disappear into the leaves and now out of initiative Good. and you see the people kind of tied up over by a tree are sort of looking and one's like hello hello uh, first I'll Feed my last potion to. Uh 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 uh. Oh okay okay yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, two locks down. Yeah, right. Let's, let's two. deal with two lock first. <laughs> Sorry. I will level two healing random. Oh. Okay cool. So you like me too? That feels good. Four five six seven eight nine ten eleven. Nice. Uh, I'll run over to the people. All right, they are in this order. Well, they're pretty much in the order I described. I'm, it doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm just cutting ropes and yeah. and hands as right. I go. Just. <laughs> All right. Bless you. So you all kind of rush over to these people, and they're all blinking, like, ugh, looking at the light. You see a dwarf. Uh, he's looking a little rough for wear, but he's kind of looking at you all. You see a tiefling. Uh, she's, like, a deep purple and got these, like, black horns. And then a, a younger man, looks to be about 20, 25 years younger than her, bears a bit of a resemblance, uh, is also uh, a tiefling. Um, and then you see a halfling family. There's a husband and a wife and a young daughter who is the smallest of the halflings. And she's like, Papa! And he kind of picks her up and scoops her up. The, the dwarf sort of seems to speak for the group. And he's like, 
by Moradin's beard. Where the hell did you come from? I thought we were goners. Those feckin' elves. Yeah, came from the other side of the forest trying to get to Nightstone. He just kind of looks at the four of you. He's like, by Moradin's balls, more like it. Would have never guessed. A thousand years I'd be rescued by the likes of you. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Morak. Ugre. You can call me Mori, if you like. I used to be the proprietor of the inn, a nightstone. Well, I guess I still am what's left of it. This is the second time we have heard of ruination in this city. Oh, lad, you don't know the half of it. It's basically like the heavens opened up and shit all over us. Here's what happened. And he kind of looks at everyone and it's like, is everyone all right? Yeah, take all some right. water. I'll take off my little tiny nasty cloak and be like, ah, here for your uh, young lean. <laughs> all right. The, the father halfling kind of picks up and he's like, um, my, my name is Godric and this is my wife, Johanna. Johanna's like, hello. And this is my daughter, Ennis. He's kind of... Oh, that's her name. Pouring some water down her throat. And he kind of sets it down. Oh, that's her name. <laughs> it was Ennis, in fact. A young, young girl. And uh, Destiny sort of... Named after uh, the celebrity. <laughs> uh, the, the tiefling leans forward. She's like, my name is Destiny. This is my son, Grin. We thank you all. We thank you for saving us. I don't know what was going to happen. And Morak's like, I know damn well what's gonna happen. Those deranged elves, they've been here, feckin' with us for a good three years. Is it? Is Savages, the lot of them. I'm sorry, what were you saying, lad? I'm taking. Uh, is it just these elves who are giving you trouble? Oh, well, a good number of them actually died. Here's the feckin' fecked up part, huh? <laughs> Here's what happened. Here we were, in Nightstone. A village, nothing more. You know what we saw? We all gathered in the village square as an ice feckin' castle flew overhead, sh casting a shadow over top all of us. Oh, we were overjoyed. We thought hers Kothai on his damn flying feckin' castle come to deliver us, come to ask us for assistance. We were cheering. Didn't I say that? We were cheering up until the first rock fell. And then another and another. And feckin' boulders came raining from the damn castle. Smashed up the town a good bit. And then came the ropes. Big, thick, knotted ropes. As thick as a man. <laughs> That's pretty thick. Aye, and some men are thicker than others. <laughs> I hope Everest is like losing it, really, too. <laughs> Everest is actually losing her mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these, these ropes that came dropping down. Fucking cloud giants! Of all things, I never thought I'd see one. I've sure read about them, sure. My papa used to tell me tales about the cloud giants. And you know what they did? They kept on fucking smashing. But smashing wasn't their goal. They had a big, black, onyx obelisk in the middle of town, covered in strange runes none of us understood. Well, they damn sure snatched it right up, back up into the castle they went, and left on their merry fucking way. After smashing us up a good bit. Pretty strange. The giants, uh, that fine castle had lauded its heroes. <sighs> well, we thought the nightmare was over. But then these feckin' elves saw an opening. Holes in the wall. People scattered. They attacked us. Can you believe it? Sure, we've had some border disputes that didn't like us chopping down some of the trees. Not the ones in the forest, just the outlying ones. What are we supposed to do, man? Cook with, what, grass? Rocks don't burn, believe me, I've tried. So they attacked us, took us hostages. But it would have been far feckin' worse if an orc tribe hadn't showed up in just the right time. Well, the orcs and the elves, they're fighting. We're just trying to stay alive, and next thing I know, I've got a silk sack over my face. 
Oh, feck! Have you got uh, any drink? Uh, just the water. <laughs> right now. Oh, Sorry. I've got a little pipe weed, though. You don't like to. I could, I could certainly use some pipe weed to calm my nerves. I hate everyone. I think, ah, to the. I was gonna be like, we have some fruits and berries that aren't poisoned. That were from a and guy some named. that are, if you'd rather. I'd prefer the unpoisoned, although my gullet's so ready for food, I could take just about anything. Uh, give one to the wee one first. And this little halfling girl was like, thank you. Take some little oats in her hands. <laughs> um, uh, Everest is like kind of confused because this is so funny. Like they just have never like been in this situation. Yeah. But they love dwarves, right? Mm-hmm. And, like I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Like they spent a lot of time like, and her uh, or their uh, hammer is like d- dwarvish, and that's right. So I think that they just like not really knowing what to do would just like recite some like ancient dwarven poem to him <laughs> just like oh yeah i think you you recite a poem about in, moradin's in dwarven, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, dwar- in perfect dwarvish a, a, a tale of moradin's hammer ringing across the realms and bringing life to the trees or some some like creation like not myth. only am i doing that i'm using the, my dwarvish hammer to oh, like yeah. <laughs> i think i think he's taking a sip out of the water skin when you start and he kind of puts it down just like <laughs> and you finish and he's like that was feckin' beautiful. Where did you learn to speak Dwarvish like that? That was impeccable. From your people. Oh, oh, oh I'm impressed. Truly, more than sent you all to this day. Uh, also, the flyer. <laughs> <laughs> then you were looking for help. Ah, oh, yeah, they're. Well, they're more specifically, the <laughs> more than moves in strange ways. They say, you know. The sound of a hammer can change all of eternity, they say. That's what's written on my hammer. <laughs> I, it's like, I think I'm in love with you. <laughs> I'm married to the church. <laughs> you don't have to be. <laughs> Destiny is like, truly, we can't thank you enough. We thought we were goners. Those elves, they said despicable things. Nothing that should have been heard by a child. Even my sweet boy. And he's going to stop it, Mom. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, I don't know how many more of them there are, but that one in particular will only rot. And uh, the little Ennis is like, Are you an elephant? Sort of. (laughs) She's an elephant. (laughs) I'll, uh, I'll, I'll touch the little Ennis with my trunk. All right, she giggles. She's also, like, this big. Yeah. I mean, she can walk on her own. <gasps> can I she... pick her up in my trunk? Absolutely, you can. <laughs> yeah, you, and you very gently kind of wrap it and pick it up, and she's, like, just clapping and, like, squealing. I pretend I'm an eater. <laughs> oh my kids God. love that shit. Like, you're totally <laughs> just, like... All the time, but then for kids, you're just <laughs> I become it. Like, it up. I become fucking like a uh, Dumbo drop. <laughs> <laughs> Did you speak like a bush garden? Operation like... Everest drop. <laughs> Wait, what is Dumbo drop? Operation <laughs> Dumbo drop. <laughs> movie where they gotta drop an elephant in. No. The Corps of Army Engineers decided that a combat elephant was was the best to be deployed. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Uh, I mean, kind of at all that. I think he'd be a little bit. He's gonna go back over there and be like, "Yep, and I'm a goblin." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't seem too weirded out by it. Mostly, they're just so thin. No, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, he's just rubbed the wrong way over this encounter, and then like he's like, eh, "I'm gonna go over to that sword, though." Oh yeah, you do indeed. It's glowing. Yes, it is. And hold on one second, because I had it up what it was. What it is. What it is. What the sword looked like. Oh, I lost it. What that sword do, though? One second. Okay. Uh, it is.
It is, in fact, you know, we just let people know what their swords are. Uh, it is a plus one longsword that can allow anyone who speaks in Elvish to cast a message ch- cantrip at will. All right. Oh, I was already going to give it to two longs. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, I'll check the balance. As I walk away, then dead, dead. What's that? <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, he's standing there all. What, what is this? It's a magic sword. Blade singers. If you don't know, the wizards sing a song with it. I think you earned it. I had trouble finding purchase with my own blade in these southlands. My shield, however, found no no surface too hard to reach. If it helps me train in the style that fights down here, I believe I shall try and use it well. I'll go up to the family. The halfling family? Uh, so it was a halfling family, a tiefling, mother and her son, and... and, then and... The dwarf. Morak. You can call him Mori. Mori. Well, I'll go up to all of them. With the events that happened today and how long did they say all did they say all this happened at once uh, today? they indicate that it was two days ago oh okay yeah. with the events of the last two days i surely can't even imagine a way that you must be able to sleep at night peacefully well i like oh i believe i'm gonna fall fast asleep the damn elves kept us hiking all night um <laughs> nearly dead on my feet I can't even imagine how the wee little one kept up, although I've seen some kind of energy coming out of those little halfling children. <sighs> Gets a bit loud. I think I'll be able to sleep just fine. Not sure what you're getting at. Oh, well, I I make um, sleep aids, is all. I just have a few that I was going to offer. He kind of like, I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but roll persuasion. What about deception? Uh, you can do either one, sure. It's just that I'm more, like, you know. When do we ever use deception? When you're lying. Well, I'm always when, lying. When Hyderian lies. Persuasion. <laughs> uh, 17. All right. Uh, Destiny, so I feel like I would have some. <laughs> um, which flavor would you prefer, rosemary or mint? I also have a combination. It's like, I'm adventurous. I'll try the combination. <laughs> She slips it in like a little. Y'all got any more than two <laughs> Yeah. Do you have it, is, <laughs> it is for adults only. She's like, no, oh, of course. And with that, Morak is just like, oh, I don't know what became of the rest of the Nightstone people. Like I said, orcs were attacking, elves were attacking. Perhaps the orcs captured them. Don't know. Drug them away. Maybe they were going to ransom them. Hadn't known them to be so chaotic in the past, but I guess they're always looking for an opening orcs. Hmm? Goblins too, no offense. Just in my experiences. Down in the tunnels, you know. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well. What do you think? You going to take us back to Nightstone? Can you help us? We'll take you back. We'll look for the other townspeople. If you beat these damn elves, imagine you're pretty good with your blades. I wish I could have joined you. Just have the axe in my hand again. It's been a long time. Well, I think giant castles keep coming out of the sky. We saw hill giants raiding a whole town quite out of the ordinary. We defeated them too. Hill giants and cloud giants. Bit strange, eh? Wreaking havoc in the area. Hmm, that is strange. Most people have gone their whole lives without seeing a giant, and now we see many. Aye. Well, I'm just a simple inn proprietor. What do I know? What we do know is <coughs> standing in this forest is not beneficial to anyone. Aye. Can you get us back to Nightstone? I'm afraid I'm quite turned around. Not only do I hate trees, I also have a sock in my head. <laughs> if we were to assist um, all of you back tonight, so would 
Anyone would perhaps be able to lead us to somewhere we might be able to stay for the night? Well, I think my inn might still be standing, or at least parts of it. I did see a boulder crash through the north side, but all that was there was the kitchen. So as long as you're not hungry, I can probably put you up for a room. I will say we also got some money set aside for adventurers, so if it's coin that motivates you, I completely understand. We've all got to make a living. Mm. Fact is, we couldn't find good adventurers. Not after what happened, you know, golden leaf and all. Hard to come by. What? Golden leaf? I have not passed through in my travels. No, it, and you never will. Not worth it at this point. It was destroyed. I'll accept the Tower of Nithbis. What is with these towns and villages getting destroyed? Uh, that's from the Drag King. That's what they say. That's just a way of life. I've lived a good 300 years. I've heard of villages getting wiped out all the time. That's just life, Wadi. This is why people should take a nomadic lifestyle. There's no village to destroy, you cannot lose your village. Aye, if there's one thing that I think would be safer, it'd be sleeping out with me balls to the wind <laughs> under the stars. Indeed. Everest high five. <laughs> yeah, he's like, no matter wife. I'll take a good dwarven stronghold that can withstand a siege. In fact, back when my grandfather lived up in, uh, there, and he starts yeah. telling a long I, story. I would like walk along. I, yeah. I think we all back. start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's always like clapping you and like, and you know what I'm talking about those doors that you put the inlays. Yeah. Anyways, we had those doors. Like he's just telling all kinds of. I crazy think at some point, stories. Tulak does in fact know Dorvish would shout back. That's the third time you have talked about those doors. <laughs> he turns around and casts you an eye and is like, Anyway. <laughs> Your dwarvish is an Asgard. No, it's, it's common trade dwarvish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think before we leave the forest, though, I think I'll look back. I'll hike my sword up. Look it up in the trees. Just pissed about the whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take back what I said, friend. Feel free to judge those elves as much as you want. What bothers me is they're an extreme case, but there's a little bit of it in everyone. Right? Most people don't trust me, they, or they don't think about me at all. Crazy. They don't listen when I talk, or they talk over me, or repeat what I say. They stand closer to me than they stand to other people. They make their arms bigger. Everybody, that's why I wrapped this sword. Everybody thinks I stole it. Okay. I stand close to you because I know you have my back. I like fighting with you. I like fighting with you. It was a good fight. It was a good fight. And now you earned your sword. Tight. All right, you guys travel for a little while longer. That was awesome. And finally, the next day, mid-afternoon, Nightstone comes into view. A river flows around the settlement, forming a moat. The village itself is contained within a wooden palisade, beyond which you see a windmill, a tall steeple, high-pitched rooftops, and several other large buildings. The trail that you're on ends before a lowered drawbridge that spans the moat, and beyond the drawbridge you see two stone watchtowers which flank an open gap on the palisade. South of the village, which is on the other side of the village essentially, surrounded by the river moat again, is a cone-shaped, flat-topped hill upon which stands a stone keep enclosed in a wooden wall. The keep, which overlooks the village, has partially collapsed. A wooden bridge that once connected the keep to the village across sort of a cut through the moat has also partially collapsed. And as you look closer, you can see multiple roofs and parts of the palisade crushed by massive boulders that are still standing in place. Looks exactly like they described boulders that fell from the sky. And as you come out in the clearing and focus on the on the village, you sort of look to your right, which would be the west. And whereas at first you detect no activity, your eyes adjusting in the midday sun exiting the forest, you can see a large orc warband in the plain before the village. Orcs appear to be furiously digging trenches or something. Some sentinels notice you not far away, and a horn blares. And all the orcs kind of stand up in the distance that you can see. And you see one particularly large-looking orc stand up and heft a great battle axe, put it over their shoulder, 
and start striding towards you. And as they do, a retinue of about six other orcs kind of fall in behind them. They're sort of marching towards you, not with great speed. We would have had time for a short rest in this. Absolutely. This is the next day, so you've had a long rest. Oh, we've had a long rest. Gotcha. My bad. All right. Well, set my sword over and start striding at the same pace. All right. You all walk, and the villagers who you've rescued are hanging pretty far back. You all walk forward, and now coming into view, clearly striding across the plain, you see this huge orc woman. She's got war paint across her face. It's like four white lines. And then um, she's got like leather armors kind of and all over her body. You can see this like war paint that's been painted on. It's looking a little smudged and worn now. Like it hasn't been freshly applied. It's kind of cracked in places and stuff. And she looks at you all and kind of snorts, <laughs> sees the villagers behind you. Says, I am Glasha. Master of the Craven Hammer tribe. I, not the Dwarven accent. Let me try that again. <laughs> I am Glasha, Master of the Craven Hammer tribe. Long have we dwelt on the banks of the great river that you call Deserin. The elves of our deep nearly hunted us to extinction a generation ago. But curious it was when we saw the great castle attack the village of Nightstone. When the elves attacked, we did not understand, but could not condone such wanton violence. My tribe now digs the graves for those fallen. While that is not the death custom of my people, it is theirs, and the survivors have asked us to do so, which we do with heavy hearts. You have escaped from the Ardeep Forest, and I do not see elves with you, so I can only imagine that you faced them and bettered them. And it's some of them. <laughs> she smiles and, like, extends a hand out to you. Oh. It's no. like a... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess it's not the same. I'm speaking goblin, but I imagine there's some that crosses over with orcish. I'll just be like, Forcha. She's like, Forchisk. <laughs> <laughs> Shakes your hand and, like, pats you in a yeah, very yeah, friendly yeah. fashion. And she's like, And what of you? Glasha. Tulak. Tulak. Pleasure. What of you, great one? Glasha. <laughs> Everest. Pleasure. And you, like, she kind of squats a little bit, not as far as she did for him, but, I mean, very warm, just, like, extending this big, meaty hand. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she takes it and is like, <laughs> Nice to meet you all. There's not much left of the village, but those survivors are doing what they can. I suspect they're in great need of adventurers. That is why we are here. That was our intention to journey this way. Very well. Our graves will be dug shortly, and the humans can mourn in whatever fashion they mean to. We will need to return to our tribe shortly, but we will help defend while they get the palisade back in place. With luck, those giants will not do what they did again, and the elves of Ardeep seem to have been dealt with handily. And as she says that, you see in the background another orc, like, throwing an elven body onto a pile. That's a pile of, like, 40 dead elves. I think... I think we must get these villagers back to what is left of their homes, so they can take solace in some sort of roof. The elves we ran into were taking them hostage. Hmm. To fell ends, no doubt. I have known many elves, liked very few, but those were certainly the ass end of elvendom. They did not make a good impression on us. Luckily, for the most part, the only impressions they'll be making is the soil. Hmm. A fitting end. Well, lucky the village has the honorable tribes of it was Cl uh, the clash uh, no uh, craven hammer Cra craven hammer the craven hammer i'm sure that morak and the others shall not forget this our relations have not always been so warm but we could not condone such genocide especially in the face of such tragedy we could hear their cheering when first the castle arrived and then that turned to screams better relations do start somewhere. I am sure both sides can take a step forward after this. I'm sure you're right. 
Well, shall we get to what's left of Nightstone? I shall. And with that, you all walk towards the shattered village. All around you, people hurrying themselves to get back to work. You see groups of families mourning their dead in the fields and the graves that have been dug by the Craven Hammer tribe. And that is where we will end tonight's episode. As she walks away, though, I'm like, what a woman. (laughs) Tall drink of grog. (laughs) All right, y'all. All All right, that was good. Tight, y'all. Good stuff. We beat Fucking elf balls. Nazis. We beat a banshee. <laughs> we saved you beat a banshee. people. <laughs> yeah, we the, died. The rest, the rest of did, us. You got... did beat that banshee. <laughs> Ten elf Nazi scouts. Ten elf Nazi scouts. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. All right, Bye. y'all. Well, we're going to go launch a raid. Hope everybody has a great rest of their weekend. Mm-hmm. We'll see you next Sunday with episode three of Storm King's Thunder. Nice. Getting into the real meat of the adventure now. This was completely different than what's in the book. Yeah. Really, really flipped a lot of stuff around. Well, it made for a good a good session for sure. I, I well, really thank you. It. Appreciate that. I like the woods. They felt very, uh, very alive. Good. The ruins. Cool. The, I'm glad. Just the, the two deer, sacred <laughs> deer. <laughs> It's so hard to add I just have that a of exploration what? in D and D that like you got to throw some weird magical stuff now and again. Yeah. Otherwise, I can't it doesn't feel like believe anything. Coach what? hasn't hasn't sang. Oh, I can feel it coming back again, like a Storm King Thunder. Oh man! <laughs> nope, nope. I did. I was not gonna do live. Nope. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, y'all. Thanks again for hanging out. We'll Thanks, see you.